Okay, um, in that case, let's get started with the, um, with the full session of the board, uh, the regular session, for um, the welcome of um, participants and public. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Floor, if you don't mind, Floor. I don't, I don't mind at all. I'm wondering if all the board members are back and are they ready? Uh, yes, here. Okay, so if you can show your little. Oh. Yeah, if you're back, perhaps you could put your camera on so we can see that you're here. Everyone. Yeah, so if you could, if all the there board members show themselves and have their little surprise would be great if they have one and we just wanted to say it's teacher appreciation week and we are sincerely and eternally grateful for the long hours nights and weekends that have been spent by all our teachers <laughs> forming plans and uh, you know we uh, to teach and love all our kids during these challenging times uh, you're our most valuable resource and we appreciate you everything that you're doing now and have done through the years to help kids become lifelong learners and contributing members of society. So this is, <laughs> that was it. So thank that you. That was great. Thank you, Flor. Thank you, all back. of you. Yeah, yeah. I took, I took pictures of us. <laughs> yeah. And Excellent. if you haven't been doing Mo Williams at 1 p.m. every day, he said, I, I haven't, but I did have done some of it. It's, really it's so fun. fun. It's really fun. <laughs> and my kids are not little. So, <laughs> so um, teacher appreciation. Um, definitely. Um, well, moving on then to agenda revisions. I think uh, we'd like a um, an executive session at the end, if we still have the stamina for it. Um, is that, uh, is that correct, Deborah? Yes. Okay, very good. Um, anyone else have anything they'd like to um, revise in the agenda? Okay, good. And that, oh, Floor. So I, I just wanna add a, a, a line item to discuss teacher appreciation. Besides what we just did, but yeah. Oh, okay. Later on the yeah, later on our schedule, on our agenda. Wonderful. Maybe how about if we, how about if we put it in um, uh, a seven point two say of um, personnel. Would that work? Okay. So um, teacher appreciation and a new seven point two. Okay, great. So in that case, um, we're ready for item 3.3, public comments. Um, now, I can't really see everything at this point. Um, are, there, are there public comments that are not connected to uh, an item that's already on the agenda? Hopefully, everyone has been able to get a copy of that agenda. Um, please, any member of the public who would like to speak up, uh, say in the next five to seven seconds, I'll just hold my Scott, face. Scott, this is Robbie. I assume you, you want my public comments about net metering. I don't think that was on the full board agenda. I'm not really sure. Do you want them now or would you like them further on? It's on, um, it's on the agenda under- It is on uh, the agenda, Robbie, um, at 5.4.2. Oh, um, okay. I'll that's- Okay, excellent. Thanks. <clears throat> okay. Um, any member of the public who would like to speak up, please do so. Okay, I'm not hearing anyone. So we will then move on to item 4.1, board steering team, as it's written here. Um, 
which is an item that was on our agenda for the last meeting, but um, was uh, punted to this meeting uh, just because it got so late. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, Chris, uh, yeah. you were sort of um, an instigator of this. Instigator is such an inflammatory word, Scott. Oh my, oh my. An initiator. Um, a, con a concerned citizen, maybe. Good. Um, so the, um, I don't think we ever, as a board, formally um, created a steering committee. I think it just kind of came together um, as a, a as a an idea to help move the board along. So I would like to at least have a um, a formal recognition that we're going to have a steering committee if we want to. Um, because it seems to me the steering committee has assumed um, some of the responsibility of an executive committee. Um, and if we um, are going to keep the steering committee, I would suggest that we expand it um, to a five member committee and have one representative from each of the towns. And I know that may seem to go contrary to this idea that there are no individual towns anymore. There's only one um, district. Uh, but I think the fact that we have three representatives from each of the towns on the board um, is a, a reflection of we're together, and but we still have um, we have um, town interests as well. Uh, so the proposal is to uh, discuss whether we want to have a steering committee, um, and if we do, to uh, expand it to five members as opposed to three. And, and have a discussion as to define what we, what we think the steering committee's role should be because, you know, there's, uh, I think there's no doubt that when um, steering committee is coming back and making recommendations, uh, it carries weight. Thank you, yeah, Chris. So interesting. Yeah, very. I, I appreciate it. Um, can we try to maybe um, devote 10 minutes to this uh, and see how that goes uh, between the discussion of your points do we do we want to have a steering committee and if so should it be expanded to five members uh, did I accurately capture your um, your thought Chris sure yep okay um, how about discussion from board members Lindy. I just, um, I assume what we're, what you, Jonas, and Flora are doing as far as the agenda is what we're referring to as far as a steering committee, which used to be done by the executive committee when there were a million boards. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Yes. And I um, support Chris's um, proposal as well as the idea of one from each town gives equal representation. So that makes perfect sense to me. Thank you, Lynn. I agree. I support Chris's proposal. I don't, I don't have anything to add to it. I think it's, it sounds great. Dorothy. Oh, OK. I see the thumb. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, others who would like to weigh in on this? Um, I have I have one question uh, or one concern. Um, part of the reason I know why we developed this um, kind of ad hoc arrangement was uh, it grew out of the sort of the nature out of the prehistory of the uh, merged board, and uh, I recognized that um, that. I may not be completely, um, I may not command the full confidence of every member of the board. And um, I thought it would be a useful and a confidence building measure to include um, another or others who would, in the view of the, um, of the board membership, kind of balance me out, if I could call it that. Um, and, and that has, I think, 
happened in, in my in my view um it's it's worked out essentially as i as i had hoped um not without frustration at times i think among all concerned but but that's the nature that's exactly what we're looking for in a way um i i'm not a huge fan of of executive committees just because from what i've seen they create a kind of um class structure within the board there's sort of an in group and an and a not in group um and i i would love to have a board even a 15 member board um of of equals full equals really um apart from you know obviously the the officers of the board are elected to do um their particular to play their particular roles but i i'm i'm not objecting if the board wants to have this i will not of course um you know uh say that it's a, a bad idea or anything i just wanted to explain kind of the background for why it is the way it is at the moment um so that you have that in order to compare with Lindy, I mean, please. I just, um, I feel we already have, um, <clears throat> I don't, I don't want to call it inequity or the in crowd and the out crowd. We are all equal. And yet we sometimes get additions to agendas at the last minute from you usually, maybe because you're the chairman. Um, but I see it as we should all have input and yet all of us can't meet to do the agenda. So for me, I would be much more comfortable with one rep from each town because yes, we're merged, but we are five towns and it would make me feel more comfortable that there were more voices at the table in the agenda. Not Thank an you. in crowd, out crowd. Right, okay, thanks, Jill. You're muted, Jill. Um, yeah, no, I know. You know what? I'm, I'm doing it. I'm controlling it from my phone. If you control it from the video, I get stuck out because my, my video is so, um, so uh, unstable. So I'd rather control it from my phone. If you can trust me to, try <laughs> to do that, you can mute me if I make noise. Um, uh, I, I just wanted to see if there was any, rather than having like a whole go round about this, I, I'd be curious if anybody objects to Chris's proposal and do it that way, because that might be a lot quicker than you know, all the back and forth. So is there anybody who has a concern about Chris's, uh, Chris's proposal or doesn't agree with it? I'd love to hear that. And otherwise, I think we should just move forward. Kari. I just had a question. Is there, is agenda planning the only function of this committee? It's supposed to be, yeah. Um, and- Well, supposed to be is not is. is. I, I would say that it, it almost always is. Sometimes, you know, human beings being the way we are, you, it's difficult to um, to keep the discussion wholly within the bounds of agenda setting. It's, it's you know, it, it spills over, of course. And I, I just wanted to be honest about that. But no decisions are taken in that committee or, or group. So it's distinct from the executive committee. Does, does the executive committee have some additional authority or function? I don't remember that in the articles. Or... There, there actually is no executive committee at the moment. Um, okay. it's, uh, it's just this kind of ad hoc agenda um, setting group um, that consists of the chair, vice chair, and clerk. Um, okay. and, and that's it. Any anybody else? Uh, Jill made a um, procedural suggestion that sounds sounds good to me. Um, how about uh, how about if before we move to um, to taking some sort of action, um, w if we do expand it and, and formalize it as an agenda committee, and um, have five people. Um, say two more from from uh the towns that are not represented which would be berlin and and middlesex um why don't we why don't we come up with uh two names from um one from middlesex one from berlin 
Jonas. Yeah, I think that I would decline uh, to be part of this committee. Oh, um, it's, okay. It's it you know it's from you know some of some of the communication that I've received um, indicates that there is a. Um, I'm not sure what the white right right word is, um, but some you know some inflammatory stuff was so you know was uh, was communicated to me about the perceptions of the committee. Um, I I regret that deeply, um, and if the executive if we're going to form an executive committee that is going to take decisions that is going to be a formal committee with notes and warnings, um, and is going to be taking action. Um, I'm just not sure that that's, um, I'm not, I don't think that that's an activity that I uh, would prefer to be involved in. I've really, I've really enjoyed spending the time with, with you, Scott, and with you, Flora, and with you, Deborah, um, every other Wednesday. Um, um, they have been ad hoc. We have, you know, talked about the agendas. I've learned a lot. Um, but if this is going to expand and turn into a more, um, a more formal and uh, time-consuming and involved process. My bandwidth is limited, and um, my my desire to be part of you know what may become a more contentious process uh, is very limited. Okay, thank you, Janice. Sorry to hear it. Um, can, all right. can I just clarify something? Well, but we're not talking. I thought we weren't talking about creating an executive committee that could act in in lieu of the board. I thought we were continuing to talk about an agenda committee. That's what I'm in favor of. A, a, a slightly expanded version of what we have now that would just be helping to develop the agenda. Given that that's a really hard thing to do with 15 people, so that's what I thought we were talking about. Um, that, and that's and, what I'm supporting. And and Lindy, I I see your thumb. Um, and that's and Chris, yes. That's the only proposal that's on the table. Uh, there's no talk of an executive committee okay. here, and okay. um, it is it, it, it's un, it's unfortunate that there's, that there's inflammatory rhetoric or conversation or whatever communication it is that Jonas was just talking about. That's um, about this or, it's, or something. Yeah. Um, uh, so Please, uh, is that Jill and then Fleur? Well, I'm just going to suggest that maybe uh, uh, we se we separate the questions back out. So let's just get let's just decide if we want to have an agenda committee or not, and then we can sort out the representation separately. I feel like now we're getting stuck in the muck again. So uh, my hope was to like move us forward, and then you know so we can get through the rest of our agenda, and we can sort out the who's going to be on it uh, separ separately or maybe even talk about it next time um, if that's really a complicated conversation. Sure. I, I don't want to get bogged down in this. Sounds fine. Okay. And I'll floor? Second, I'll second Jill's motion. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> floor? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with Jill. I also agree with Jonas. I think uh, they were, we wanted to do our retreat sort of leads us to these two. We, we had called this an ad hoc committee, but it was really like a governance team is what we would call it. There's a lot of history in other districts also having the, the clerk, the vice chair and the chair meet. I think adding two more members is important, but after we do that, we really need to have a conversation about it, how we operate together and how we trust each other so that it, there's there's more transparency in this uh, in, in the work that we do and we are able to develop that, that trust. Okay, so let's, um, let's follow Joe's suggestion. Um, that we address the question of a five-member agenda committee formalized um, with warned meetings and with a, um, with a specific membership. Um, Jael has a question. Oh, sorry, Jael. Thanks. It's more of a comment. Um, yeah, I don't have the bandwidth either to join another meeting. Um, and. Worcester only has two board members currently, so I don't know who would be joining that. Um, Worcester, yeah, uh, we can, uh, again, the, the staffing of the committee, uh, we, can, we can figure out 
um, after we after we come up with the you know the form of it. Um, and there's always towns too. He's from Worcester. Um, so uh, how about uh, Chris? Would you like to formulate a, a motion then? Um, I move that we um, formally. Um, recognize um, a steering slash agenda committee and that we expand it to five committee members, one from each town. Is there a second? Oh, second. I think I was muted. Oh, Joe, second. Great. Okay. Um, any further discussion of the motion? Floor. Um, um, unmute, please. Oh, sorry. For an agenda planning committee to work, I think it should include the, 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 the clerk, the chair, and the vice chair because of their responsibilities in doing the agenda planning. So it might help us keep those. It's just a, just a thought. Sure, um, because since uh, Joe suggested that we look at the composition of the of the group on a separate occasion, um, let's let's hold that thought maybe for for the future. And and um, any other any other comments or discussion? Otherwise, if there aren't, let's um, let's vote. Um, remember. Uh, participants. If you click on participants, then you can see the yes or no. So um, all in favor of Chris's motion, as seconded by Jill, um, please click yes. And any opposed, click no, please. And I'm seeing only yeses on the screen. So the motion carries. Sorry, Chris, uh, uh, were you saying something? No, no. Okay, good. So the motion carries. And how about we defer to another occasion the, um, the composition of this committee? Is that by consensus? You okay with that? Okay, Absolutely. great. Yeah. Very good. Okay, thanks everyone. Now, 4.2, superintendent transition update um, for uh, Brian Alkowski to join us on July 1st, 2020. Um, I've uh, been in touch with Brian and he has moved and is um, unpacking and getting settled and figuring out <coughs> his you know, life support network for himself and his family. Um, he's living in Plainfield, uh, trying to um, trying to adapt to our internet desert in Vermont. Um, you'll recall that I sent an email about a week ago asking for any ideas that you might have regarding his entry plan, which he's working on anyway, but he just wanted to make sure that he didn't leave out anything that, um, that you might consider uh, important. And um, I heard back from Kari a very interesting idea of um, having him introduce himself in a video, perhaps interviewed by a student, um, which I think would be great. Uh, and I'm sure that um, we could figure out some way to make it happen technically. Um, are there are there any other thoughts about um, that we should relay to Brian as to uh, what he should do? Anything that, that he might not be thinking of himself? Um, Diane? What about oh, oh, sorry, Diane and then Chris. So I guess it would help me to know what some of the plans are that he has. And, and whether or not there needs to be any suggestions to it, because he might have covered a lot. Yeah, and and um, he has uh, he has a draft. Um, he he didn't feel it was quite ready for uh, sharing with the board, um, 
I think he wants to make a good impression. But I, I'll, I'll relay that back to him, Diane, and, um, and so that we can take a look at it and maybe fill in any gaps that we might see. Thanks. And, and Chris. Um, I was going to say the same thing, uh, find out, or at least get a sense from him what he thinks he needs um, in order to have some foundation for transition. Great. Okay. Um, I, I shall definitely do that. Um, another, another question that came up had to do with um, the, the notion of crossover, which I guess is the, is the term of art. Um, I, uh, please correct me, um, Deborah, or anyone if I, if I get it wrong, um, get the terminology wrong. But crossover is the, is the process of consultation in order to um, transition um, between uh, executives in the school district. Is that, is that a fair definition for it? Uh, yes, yeah, so did, you, did you want me to address some things that we, I know that there's been outreach on the part of the leadership team on behalf of them by Kelly and I have been reaching out to Brian as well. Um, so typically there are, well, first of all, there's a tentative two day retreat scheduled at the end of June uh, between the leadership team and Brian. And uh, there are, there's another retreat scheduled later in the summer. Um, that those dates were set within the last few weeks. Um, Brian and I have um, been communicating electronically. We've had some phone conversations now that he's in the state. Uh, we plan to connect. In fact, we just made an appointment today to um, have a conversation on Monday and then talk about scheduling time for that transition. Um, I typically call it a transition, uh, but so I'm going to make myself available to him as much time as he would like. And I, we haven't, um, our leadership team hasn't, I don't believe had time to be thinking yet about the June retreat, but that is on their future agenda plan for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Deborah. Um, and another question that, um, that came up was, uh, and, and this may be one for you, Lori, if, um, if you're still here in this maze of, um, of video images, uh, what is the standard practice for this? Is there, um, are there per diem days that are typically allocated or, um, and if so, how many would that be? Um, how does that work? Um, what we've done in the past is that we have um, usually for the crossover, there's only been a few days and um, we've afforded um, the new employee time off in the month of July or August, kind of like a comp day. So I think when Bill Kimball came, we had four or five days of crossover. And then in June or July, he took time off. That wasn't necessarily vacation. It was in trade. So there was no financial exchange for that, but it's, the board's pleasure, whatever you'd like to do. That's been my experience as well. Uh, Any time that's put in in advance is usually comped later. That's great. Um, that that makes a lot of sense. Um, what do what do other board members think? Um, show of thumbs would be would be fine. Uh, on comp time for, yeah. Great. I'm seeing. I'm seeing. We're all thumbs. In a good way, Jonas. Please. This would, of course, you know, make it incumbent upon us not to tax his time, right? So as not to incur so much of that, uh, which makes the conversations that uh, that you, Scott, and the leadership team and Deborah have with Brian that much more important. Thank you. It's good to know. Yes, good to keep in mind. Um, Jones, um, just a clarifying question. When you say it makes it even more important, you mean to be concise and efficient and to represent the board and make sure that communication occurs? That's, that exact, that's exactly right. Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah, um, good clarification. Not that it really needed that much clarification, but it's always nice to have. Um, 
Okay, I don't have anything further on superintendent transition. Oh, it's Jonas, please. So Scott, it's great that you're communicating with Brian. It's great, uh, uh, Kelly, thank you for being in touch with him. And uh, it sounds like you're leading that outreach. Um, Scott, can you tell us anything else about the nature of your conversations with Brian besides you know, the mechanics of moving and the sort of logistics of his move up here? Have you discussed with him you know, the history of the district, how this board, how this you know, uh, uh, municipality came to be, the atmospherics, the board dynamics, all of you know, anything like that? Is there anything that you can share with us uh, along those lines? Sure. Um, I, I, have, I have discussed it to some degree, um, basically just to give him uh, a framework for understanding the, um, the dynamics and uh, the sort of the, the different positions that he's likely to encounter on, on various issues. Um, I have not. I have not tried to push uh, an agenda of my own. I've. Um, I think I, what I've explained to him is that he really needs to discover for himself, and he is. Um, he is completely. Uh, I mean, on his own experience uh, already took him to that um, to that realization. Anyway. Um, I, we have talked in the whole uh, interviewing and hiring process, we've talked about um, the, the history of uh, Act 46 and the, um, the merging of the boards, the expansion of the board from 10 to 15, most recently in March, and um, the dynamic that that introduces. Um, he, uh, he's interested. He's very interested, but he's interested in finding out mostly for himself. He's, um, let's see. Uh, oh, I, I did one of the subjects of tonight's executive session. I have uh, run by him as well. Um, so, just to, yes, Jonas. Can I ask you when you ran that by him? Um, in an email on Monday and in a phone conversation yesterday. So um, that's, uh, I, you know, he's, Brian is um, Brian is is a is an extrovert, and he is um, he's very interested in people and very interested in um, sort of the human factor in general. I'd say um, so. He's he's he asks a lot of questions, and um, and has a lot of has had a lot of experience in in education and. Um, including in some difficult environments. Uh, so I, I think he's, he's going to have to shift gears to some extent. This represents um, a very different kind of climate from what he has spent most of his career working in. Um, so he's, he's interested in trying to soak up as much as he possibly can. And uh, meeting with every board member is, uh, that's one thing, Diane, that he definitely has in his, in his entry plan. That's great. That's great. Well, I'm sure we can give him a run for his money anyway. <laughs> yeah, and, and he may be able to give us a run for ours as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd love to move on. I'm sensitive about the time tonight because I have a, a professional board meeting tomorrow for work so that I need to be very on for. So I'm just a little sensitive about um, us getting too bogged down in any one topic if there's Understood. not a lot of decision making. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jill. Um, is that okay, Jonas? I, I, I'm happy to talk with you. Um, you know, uh, one on one too, if you like. If you if if you still have questions, I'm sure um, we can find that time. Excellent, good. Um, so, 
Moving on then to 5.1. You have a Let's question do... from Floor. Floor has a question. Oh, sorry, Floor. Yes, please. I just, we can do it at the next meeting, but we talked about this at our uh, agenda prepping meeting and at this meeting that Brian, you had mentioned that Brian was looking for a list of people that he wanted to contact uh, that we would suggest for him to for him to get to know our our district. So I, I think more people should be involved with that list. So it'd be nice to it might be nice to that to do that. And I, I I also think that our we can we can talk a little bit more about how we wanna introduce Brian into the into the system. And I'm a little concerned that he's just has the, he just has one voice right now. And unfortunately our board is still has a, you know not totally blended together. So, so I think it would be good to, in, to, to have a, a conversation with him, a, a broader conversation with him without getting into the details. Yeah, I, I think our hope is to have a retreat with him, is it not? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I wanna be talking about. I don't really, I, I hope that he's not, I, I'm a little concerned, that's all I wanna say. Okay, thanks. Um, good. So, unless there's another objection, let us move to 5.1.1, student last day of school. Deborah, would you like to lead on this? Yes, I would. Good evening again, everyone. Um, we are um, going to be taking a look at, well, there's a few things in play at the moment. Um, daily guidance from the governor and the Agency of Education Secretary, uh, Dan French, um, and anticipated guidance about end of school year and summer, which is actually going to be coming uh, or either Friday the 8th or Monday the 11th. Um, so we really would just like to put forward a proposal which may, be, may have to be amended or adjusted based upon uh, statewide uh, guidance or requirements. As you know, uh, COVID-19 um, is certainly is, is in flux. And as that occurs, of course, our responses have to be flexible. And, um, but what we have, what our administrative team would like to propose this evening, pending any changes in guidance, um, from the secretary or governor is that the board would consider um, having our last day of school be the 11th, which is our typical last day of school um, if we had not had any snow days. And there's two reasons for this. One is um, we have been given permission to have our school year be in, by the state uh, to include the 175 days um, 175 days concludes on June 11th because we had five snow days this year. Um, so essentially we're requesting that the board forgive the five snow days. Um, again, this is pending no further action from the governor or the secretary of education uh, to authorize us another change in date. We would like to, however, hold on the final decision as to our uh, support staff and teachers calendar uh, again until a little bit later on and certainly no later than the next board meeting. Uh, we have been having conversations with the leadership team. As you know, the um, future school year is uh, still unknown in terms of how it will open uh, and certainly our summer programs are also, uh, we've not yet received formal guidance on, on how to proceed with our typical summer school ESY and uh, high school proficiency summer school. Um, but we have also been getting some questions uh, by families and by staff about when the last day of school should be. So our leadership team has spoken about this at length and we believe that the 11th would be um, the best day to end school at this point. It's seldom that I give a recommendation with so many caveats but as you know, things are changing. Um, I'd like to be more definitive, but um, this is a provisional recommendation, I suppose is the way to state it. Uh, so if there's no further guidance that would change the recommendation, we'd like to proceed with that as our last day. Okay, so, and what we're looking for then is a motion 
to uh, end school for students on the 11th of June, um, recognizing. Questions, Scott. Um, sorry, Mia. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering whether that June 11th date would be the end for all students, or if the seniors would have a different end date. That would be a question. Mia, I you like want to go later? <laughs> yeah. I think she was hoping for June 30th, right, Mia? I, listen, Ben Olson is standing right here. He wants to go later, too. So you guys are totally on the same page. <laughs> Stephen, are you on the call? I think I know you were earlier. Yes. Yes, oh. I'm here. Um, I, that would be inclusive of all students because our seniors would need to complete 175 days of school also. In the past, the seniors have ended a little bit earlier because of the leeway with the days, but that's not possible this year. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mia, um, and Jill, <laughs> and Finn. <laughs> um, so uh, back to the uh, motion to end school for students on the 11th of June. Uh, Lindy, yes. The way Deborah said it, this was some provisional recommendation. Yes. So I'm not you. sure there needs to be a motion, should there? Well, I do need your permission to waive the additional snow days to reduce the calendar to 175. But if you could add provisionally in light of um, recognizing that there may be further guidance or uh, orders from the governor or secretary of education, which may cause us to take a different tact. And I don't know what that's going to be. Would it make sense just to just to waive the snow days? Um, move to waive the snow days. That's one way of going. Sure. Mm -hmm. For students. For, for students. Right. Just for students. We're just right. talking about student calendar now. Chris, did you have a question for me? Yeah. Um, would is it, there a sense that the governor or the um, agency of education will have a sooner end of school date? There are many like there are rumors abound. Um, there are no facts at the moment, other than that there will be guidance released on the 8th of May. Um, so I would like to, that's why I'm, I'm trying to have this caveat. Uh, there may be a change. Uh, there may be more specific guidance than we have received. The 175 days is relying on a prior uh, order from the governor and the secretary. And you would you would uh, request the waiver of the snow days regardless of the guidance, right? That would be our recommendation, yes. Okay, so I, I will uh, move that we waive snow days for students um, in the current um, school year. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. A second. I'll second that. Thank you, Jaya. Any further discussion? If not, please go over to your um, your voting box and click yes if you're in favor of waiving snow days for students or no if you're opposed. And I see all green. Um, very good, the motion passes. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, okay. Uh, 5.1.2, COVID-19 update. Yes, I provided an update in my report this uh, month, and I'd like to just highlight a few things and add one that was not included as this is breaking information, breaking news. Uh, today, we were able to provide a, or review our uh, overall attendance for this year and compare it to the same time frame last year. Uh, as you know, our students are required to check in with their teachers and that check in and daily is the way in which we account for attendance during the school closure. And I'm very pleased to um, point out that we have over 96% participation um, in our overall from April 13th through yesterday uh, in terms of our um, attendance for students. And that is actually a full percentage point higher than it was last year. Interesting fact, but still very high. And it's, of course, uh, 
kudos to all of our teachers and <coughs> support personnel and administrators who have been working so hard to reach out and to make our remote learning meaningful on in personalized and individualized to our students. Uh, there's been just a remarkable work going on and much of which uh, you've heard about personally, perhaps in your families or I uh, had a chance to look at um, various posts from teachers on uh, in the school district on Twitter, but we're really very, very pleased with that. Very, very positive participation and engagement. Um, the other highlight I'd like to make is that we, uh, as of the 28th of April, we had served 32,818 meals, uh, which includes breakfast and lunch. So about half that number for the entire time frame since we closed in March. And recall that we did offer our school meals during April break, and we're uh, really appreciative of our food service team that uh, includes administration and our food service personnel and many of our support staff who have helped both with meal preparation, packaging, and the delivery, and of course, to our bus drivers for making that possible. Um, we've begun to include other deliveries in our buses and some of them are uh, library books are now being delivered and we've also been delivering materials and um, if necessary computers if there are things that have to be changed out. So we're using that option to try to keep our families safe, avoid having them come to school and to uh, have those deliveries done with the proper social distancing and preparation. So that's all very exciting and great news. Um, and I'd also like to thank- um, Deborah, sorry, uh, no may I interrupt just, you? Just a super quick question. Sure. Just a quick question. Can kids return books um, that way too? I happen to have a stack. Ah, you do. I believe so. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. So okay. um, I think that if you were to take a look at your um, school's website, we have the procedures noted there. Oh, great. So, I'll take a look. I'm just teasing okay. mostly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's, I'm glad that you've got a stack though. That's great. <laughs> great. Okay. Um, so we spoke about student attendance and um, that's been going very well. And let's see. Oh, and I wanted to make a, a very, very important shout out to a few other administrators who've been really working very, very hard. First uh, is Amy Molina. And I don't know if Amy's still with us. She was here earlier. Uh, Amy has been working behind the scenes um, as our, we decided initially our incident commander, but she's taken on the role of oversight of all of our uh, facilities and custodial maintenance work, which really is all the safety that's associated with our employees coming in and out of the building. And we so mm -hmm. appreciate her work. Just today, she sent out a very lengthy uh, set of documents to our principals to um, which, with detailed information that's coming from the Department of Labor for businesses that are now opening up. So there's a lot more information that we can follow, a lot of guidelines that we can follow to ensure that when employees come into the building, they are safe. And um, so thank her very, very much. I'd also like to thank Kelly for her uh, the yeoman's work that she's been doing with our special education distance learning plans and, um, and thank her for helping with the negotiations especially around some of the para issues. So thanks, Kelly, for that. And um, Jen, um, I don't know if you are feeling this, but I sometimes feel like the world must be on your shoulders with all the continuous learning plan work that's been happening. Uh, and when I take a look at and, and pop in to see meetings, I, I know that you're working continuously, making yourself available and helping our principals. And then of course, every other uh, member of our leadership team, um, has been doing such, such great work. Um, and really, I love, I love the way everyone stepped up to help um, try to address this shift in budget and the new procedure for leave the board put in place and um, supported Lori with information to help us get you the report you'll be seeing shortly. So um, those, that's my COVID-19 update and you're welcome to ask any questions of any of us if you have them. Yes, any questions from the board members? Deborah? Yes. Um, or is our meal um, service gonna continue beyond the end of the school year? Well, we have 
we are currently operating under our summer program. Um, mm. We have not received definitive guidance on that. I did, in writing, I did learn uh, at a meeting that it is something that we will be able to do, but we still have not received information about how that will be funded. Um, and in the past, when we've run summer school, we have had meals prepared at the site where the summer school is located. And last year it was in Berlin and the Berlin kitchen um, prepared meals and they were used for the students that were there and they were also sent to the high school for the high school summer school. We have not had a, a large scale summer long um, meal program. So we still have to investigate whether or not that's going to be feasible. And, um, and as Lori will be speaking later, we're also watching to see what information comes forward as to what which of our expenses are going to be reimbursed through this work. Um, and it certainly is a topic that I welcome the board's input on. I don't think we need to make a decision today, but um, understanding your point of view would be helpful as well. If the um, if the end of school is June 11th, um, at what time would you need to know the board's um, position? Well, I think we would be we needed to, we first of all need to uh, have a discussion with the team that has been operating the program, uh, yep. and we'd also need to determine. I think we'd have to collect some information and then come back to you at the next meeting with a recommendation. Uh, if you wished to have a have a specific view on it, I I think that what we've been trying to do is to respond flexibly as soon as we've been asked to carry out a specific task, such as um, when the executive order came along and said we must offer meals. You know, we immediately mobilized the team and we started doing that. And then um, today there was a uh, some guidance issued around the possibility of child care continuing. And I've not yet had time to speak with our child care uh, leader, to talk about that. So I think that the board's input is always welcome, Chris. Um, but as I said before, there's still, there's still questions about how we might, if we were to continue it, do we have the capacity? Do we have the staffing capacity? Would our buses be available, our drivers and so on? And I'm not really prepared to answer those tonight. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anyone else? If not, we can move on to 5.1.3, uh, which is future planning, literacy, and special education review. Yes. Um, May I just briefly? Um, I'm sorry. Did you want to take? That? No, no, no. You're you're doing. You're answering my question before I even asked it. Okay. Uh, so earlier this year, we had talked about uh, taking a look at these two areas. We'd even prepared, uh, um, gone as far as having a consultant provide a proposal to us, which was uh, initially to be implemented this spring. But um, of course, in the early March, we became aware of the COVID pandemic and we've not been able to um, implement that. So it is my recommendation that the board consider uh, and I could certainly work with Brian and our leader, um, leadership team on this, consider implementing this when school resumes, uh, because a good part of a review is um, inter uh, having interviews and conversations and observations with teachers when they're in the classroom, um, as well as data collection and, and overview. One thing that's clear, and I think it's been made um, our quality committee has focused on this topic um, in the last few sessions and the board has as well earlier in the year, is that we do have a um, growth that we uh, need to focus on in terms of our overall outcomes, both in terms of literacy and um, special education. And that's the purpose of, of having these reviews. Um, but again, it's really difficult to accomplish them when school is not in session. So it would be um, our hope that it could be revisited at a later time. Okay, Marilyn. So Lindy had a, I just wanted to, Lindy has a question in the chat that who was or is the consultant? And Jen, you and I had had a, a meeting about this like days before this happened. So, um, 
I'm interested in that too. And I, and then I'll make a comment after. Sure. Um, Jen, did you want to make any comment about, um, I'm just going to search through my documents. I've got five or six folders going right now <laughs> to pull up some information on it, but did you want to make any comment about it? Sure. We had talked to, um, to two different folks and the um, person who, the organization that had generated a specific proposal was the Partnership for Literacy and Learning. That's part of what they had done. We had not pursued anything beyond an initial conversation with one, with both two, two different consultants, one of which uh, gave us a proposal. That's where we had left it. Right, so my suggestion is that the quality committee take this up um, either now or in, um, at the, in the fall. And uh, I would be, I'm sure Jen or I could share that proposal and you could take a look at it. It essentially covers what I mentioned before, which includes observations, um, interviews of teachers, review of data, and then um, action-oriented -orient recommendations for how to uh, make improvements in instruction. Uh, and that would, of course, require ongoing work in professional learning and curriculum. Thank you very much. Um, this might also be uh, a topic that we can touch on in a retreat with Brian, since it sounds, Deborah, as though this will have to take place in a post-Deborah era. Um, so making sure that we just get it all together. Diane? I guess I have some concerns um, just in terms of fiscally planning for things. I mean, you said some critical pieces that this was before um, the virus really took hold. And so I think there's how our teachers also respond to some of these questions in interviews are going to sound and look very different come the fall. And I also hesitate to say in one message that we might have rescissions for our budget, which are gonna impact potential staffing and programming, but then keep carrying on um, business as usual around maybe some of the approaches we might have done to gather information. So I just caution that we move forward if we haven't signed on the dotted line with anyone until we absolutely know just what the information is that we need to know right now. Thank you, Diane. We do not have a signed contract at this time, but we do have people who are interested in a set of proposal in. Marilyn. Um, and prior to us having a greater conversation, do you suspect that you would be signing on the dotted line with these consultants? I don't. I think it's something that the quality committee, as I suggested before, that should really take up and discuss uh, and see if this is going to meet your needs. And Jen, would you agree? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I, I, Jen, I see you, so that, that sounds good. Okay. Does, does moving forward need board authorization or is that something within the uh, administration's authority for, the, uh, for getting the proposal or for accepting a proposal for the review? It was, it, in, I would say that if you would like to, um, we had received or discussed uh, the board's desire to pursue this work uh, so we were acting on that request. However, right. further refinement of the charge now with the certainly the major change in the way our schools are operating now and the uncertainty of the future uh, and the transition in leadership, I think would be it would be appropriate to take a slower path and have those conversations and refine um, the goal, which was very different six months ago than it, it would have been perhaps now or into the future. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Are, are we are we good on this topic then? Shall we um, shall we move on to five point two policy? H however, before we do move on, um, and before I turn it over to you, Chris, uh, do you want to take a, a few minutes, just uh, uh, you know, a break, necessities? Um, Sure. Yeah. So why don't we come back at 810? See you all at 810. 
And then Chris, we'll, we'll go good. straight into your thing. Can, can I raise something? Is Robbie Porter still waiting to be heard? And is he on a specific? R Robbie, Robbie is still here. And uh, I hope you don't mind us um, keeping you hanging, Robbie, um, until we get to the the energy project at 5.42? No, it's been my first experience with a group Zoom meeting. I've moved in a load of wood and done a bunch of other things and checked back in. <laughs> You're more productive than the, <laughs> than the yeah, rest that's of why, us. That's why you joined by phone for the audio, so you can kind of move around a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks, Robbie. Thank you. And thanks, Chris. <laughs> All right. It's uh, 8.10 according to my clock. So um, if we're ready to resume, if Chris is, uh, I, I, I guess it's not only Towns who is, had a, who is having a birthday. I see what looks like a happy birthday festoon. Um, Chris? <laughs> Whose birthday, Chris, if I may ask? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm just looking behind you at the at the decorations. Oh, it was aces. It was aces on uh, um, I'm not hearing you very well. Um, the connection doesn't seem great. It, it was aces. It was Ace's birthday. Ace? Who's? I mean, yes. Yeah, Ace, my steps. Oh, oh, wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. That was at the card game, too. <laughs> Great. Okay, um, Chris, it's all yours for this next bit. Okay, so we have. Um, the policies up for uh, consideration uh, B40 is a um, non retribution, non retaliation policy, and it's proposed just to create more of a comfort zone for strict employees to be able to uh, uh, with a sense of security. Um, we Sorry, Chris. Jonas, Jonas has his hand up. Hey, Chris, I, I don't know about anyone else, but I own a real hard time hearing you. You're breaking up. Could you turn your video off to conserve your bandwidth? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you, John. But Jonas, then you won't be able to see the point. Chris, I can see you with my eyes closed. <laughs> I feel for you then. Is that better? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to know any more about that. <laughs> anyway, the, the goal is to create a um, uh, more of a comfort zone for district place to speak um, on uh, matters involving the district and to encourage the speech involving matters um, of district uh, concerning the district. Uh, and we tried to fashion it so that it did not get free license to um, speak um, recklessly. So, and it was, I will say it was not in response to anything specific. Um, it wasn't, I don't think it was under any type of complaint or anything, uh, other other than just a general sense of concern, members that they, they didn't feel like to speak freely. So I guess uh, you're you're looking for comments, Chris, or or changes? Yes, looking for comments and and uh, just general um, um, sense of the board. Do you want to do a straw poll of thumbs, perhaps? Um, sure. For the well, first, how about, how about comments to see what people's general uh, positions are? 
and do their support for it moving forward or not. I'm in favor. Is this is this based on a model policy or is it something just written or where did it come from? Well, if you see the little C with the circle down at the bottom, it's the copyrighted Chris McVay policy. So I'll be um, licensing it to the district. <laughs> no Generous. charge. No charge. No, it's, not, it's not based on a model. It is not based on a model. So who has vetted the policy besides you? Um, no one, but I'm glad to run by. I think we talked about having the um, uh, district attorney run go by it if there was board support for the policy itself. With the board's authorization to do that, because that would that would uh, incur an expense. Right. Um, why don't we? Uh, do, are there any objections to having this policy continue to go forward uh, and to run it by the attorney? I hear no objections. So, moving on. Okay. Um, so, with that, we, um, Deborah, would you like to do that? Um, yes, I will. You... I can. Okay, I can thanks. contact Scott um, Cameron. I believe he does this type of work for the board. He has in the past. Okay. Great. Of course, no uh, problem. So next up is C one. Um, which, and, and, and then next up have, that is C4, uh, fairly straightforward. Any comments or concerns about either one? Otherwise, we'd be asking for a vote to adopt. Any you want comments? a motion made? Sure. Okay. Sorry. I, I, Sorry. I would Sorry. make a motion to adopt wait. policy. Jonas, Jonas has a question. No, okay. it, it, it can wait until after it's moved and seconded. Sorry. Okay. Good. To um, make a motion to adopt policy C1, student education records, and C4, limited English proficiency students. Um, uh, uh, is this on first reading, Chris? I don't think so. So first reading of B40 and second reading and adoption of C1 and C4. Is that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't include that first one because I knew it was a right. first reading. Right. Okay, good. I'll second it. Great. So Jonas? Oh. Sorry, my unmute function is not working anymore. Um, the key phrases in both of these are as required by law, right? It doesn't look like there is a whole lot other than recapitulating the fact that we will maintain records um, and uh, 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 distribute them only according to law and policy and for uh, uh, ESP, um, have equitable access to school programs as required by law. Yes. Any other questions or comments? If there aren't, we can move to a vote. Um, so let's, once again, all in favor uh, regardless of your position on this, on these two policies, um, green yes for voting for them, and red no for voting against, please. And I'm seeing all green once again. Okay, um, motion carries. Those two policies are adopted. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, <laughs> and hello to the Olson family. <laughs> um, 
All right, uh, 5.3, quality education. Kari? Okay, thank you. So um, I'll just give a brief report on what we discussed tonight. Uh, we started by taking a look at a proposed charter that we'll be bringing um, to the full board for approval just so we're clear on what the committee is, is doing and, and seeking to accomplish. Um, and then we look at this month's data set. Um, we started out by looking at some SBAC literacy proficiency rates and um, relative to state averages, we're doing fairly well. Uh, we looked at some cohort data, that is a, a single class as, a, as they move through the system. Um, noted that uh, in math with, with the particular cohort that we looked at, math SBAC proficiency rates declined over time. Uh, I think it was between fourth grade and ninth grade. And that was true at the state level, um, but it was um, our kids were losing ground at even a faster rate. And then we um, also looked at graduation rates and, um, and noted that uh, the past two most, most recent years that the rate has been at 90% before your graduation rate. And then uh, we, uh, Jen provided an update on remote learning and a summary of different successes and challenges. And I'll just highlight that there was an acknowledgement that board support is a very important um, element from, from uh, Jen's point of view. And that appreciation for teachers like we did tonight and I'm gonna discuss later and, um, and the administration and understanding and compassion and support including um, flexibility um, are very important from the, from the staff perspective right now. So, and then going forward, we're going to be looking at a draft monitoring calendar. Um, so um, looking at student achievement over the coming year and then um, continue to take in some more additional information on remote learning with a focus on implications for college. And that I think that after we've got some, some um, time um, working as a committee, then we can, um, reach out to the agenda committee on how to bring our um, our conversation to the full board. A little early for that, but um, we're getting there. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, any any questions for Kari or um, anything to add? <laughs> Good. All right, in that case, let's move on to 5.4, finance, Flora. I'm a little slow at unmuting. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna let uh, Lori uh, walk us through. I think everybody had a chance to look at, hopefully had a chance to look at the finance package. We had asked them to update us uh, on the closure due to COVID-19. And, uh, and, and I, I think we are all going to be happily uh, surprised with what she has, at least for now. So I want to say that, you know, listen to this with a very positive uh, uh, ear, because I think uh, overall uh, is looking is looking that our projected funds balance is, is really healthy right now. But I'll let uh, Lori walk us through. We, we spend most of the meeting talking about the in the expenses and she's going to walk us through that first part in after that uh, I don't know if uh, you're okay with that Ravi or do you want to go first since you've been waiting um if you can hear me now I'm fine whatever works for you guys okay okay thank you thank you so you want to go ahead Lori and yes, walk I'm us ready. through those three points mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First of all, I wanted to uh, let you know that if, if anyone has read the report, you have any questions, um, we had about 50 minutes to go through this and I know probably right now we might have five or 10 minutes. So I'm happy to have you contact me directly if you have specific questions. Um, what we covered in summary is on page seven of on the, on the fund balance report out of the finance packet. So I don't believe it's in the full packet, I believe it's in the finance packet. Mm. And so that page seven um, in summary identifies that we have about $2 million in reserves for fund balance. And fund balance is, you know, the operational side of things. It's the fund you rely on if you have a shortfall in revenue or if you have a, an unmet need in the budget. 
So the good news is um, we have about $2 million projected. Um, those numbers are pretty solid. If anything, I was sharing with the committee that they're conservative. Um, we have reservations that we had previously earmarked for technology and fiscal software. Um, that amounts to almost $600,000. So that means that there's about 1.4 million left in operations. You could change the reservations if you needed to, um, but for right now, um, from what I'm hearing, I believe that those will be sufficient funds um, for any shortfall we might have in revenue. Um, however, we have had a projected 2% retainage in case something comes up. Um, so that leaves about 738,000 available um, the committee discussed the fact that the leadership team has been reviewing options. Some of that we may recommend to reserve for future revenue shortfalls. Some of it we mm -hmm. may um, recommend get transferred to capital or for other specific purposes. Um, so that was the beginning of the report. Um, the voters did approve this board having authority to manage these funds. So that's something that our district has that's unique. Not every district in the state has that permission. So I wanted to let you know that. Um, and then when we started to look at um, other funds, we'll have more information about capital and food services and COVID. Um, we're gonna have a meeting on, we're planning to have a meeting on May 20th. Um, but in the meantime, what we know today is that based on closing down the school, the way we've had to close it, we have saved a significant sum of money um, due to the fact that students weren't in the school. The principals have been working really hard and there are many assistants with my team to try to go through and find out how much that is. And currently we're projecting a savings of $590,000. That was not included in the numbers um, on page seven. So that's good news. Um, as you know, we do have some um, government orders to provide food and distribute food, as well as to do the childcare and for the remote learning. Um, there are some revenues associated with the food. Um, we have projections based on all the hard work the U32 staff and, and the team district-wide has um, been pulling together. So those costs for those new items I had separately in the report and those costs after revenues is projected to be about $320,000. Um, when you net the two out, we're still in the positive of $270,000. Um, so that's the good news. We have a projected $270,000 more revenue than expenses due to the school close down and these new COVID initiatives. I've talked pretty fast, um, but I knew I had limited time. Um, you can see I'm excited about it. It's a new project, um, but it is ever changing. And we're still awaiting some more information at a VASBO meeting that'll be coming um, next Friday. Um, but I had recommended we have an interim finance committee meeting to just keep up with the changes and to spend a little bit more time with the newer information we're gonna have in the next couple of weeks um, so that you can feel comfortable about how things are going. So it's actually all good news. I think that's kind of the recap floor. Did I miss anything, Scott or Floor or anyone else? Again, no, please I don't, don't hesitate to email anything. me. I'm sorry? I, I don't think you missed anything except tell them how many meals Jody is serving and the data that you're collecting. Oh, about well, 1,200 a day is the average right now and it goes up and down. It's unreal, so. Mm -hmm. Um, that's a lot. Jody and team, you know, Brian. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's a group. I mean, yeah. So moving right along, unless somebody has questions, there's one more point. Okay. Any questions? No, okay, so moving into capital, because we want to make that decision, it, it was part of your, your packet. Get up to, to we have, to open we have the time. bits. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, on April 17th, we um, took our bids for the Rumney Memorial School roof project. 
and only one bidder came forward, uh, which caused us to request a waiver for the single bidder, which was received. And we are now recommending that the board approve the bid to Beauregard General Contracting in the amount of 39,500 so we can initiate that work. Anyone so else? we'll need a motion for that. Yes, please. Anyone care to make the motion? I'll move that we award the bid to Beauregard Construction for the Rumney Roof Project in the amount of $3,500. Second. I'll take it. Thanks, Jill. Okay. Oh, thanks, Flo. Um, Jill seconds. Uh, any further discussion? If not, uh, please, once again, oh, Jonas, yes. please. Um, and I remember uh, during our first meeting uh, as this board in the U32 cafeteria talking about how um, prices and the, the bids had gone way up um, because there was you know, too much work out there for construction companies to do. Um, I mean, I, I wonder, I'm just curious if, if that's Chami, I see if there's only one bid for you know a roof job um, this bid came in under budget um, we do have a large uh, group of consolidated bids that will be coming to the board the next at the next meeting and um, until those are received I really can't speak as to where we are at this time uh, the challenge has been of course that many of our construction companies have been closed by order of the governor and um, employees furloughed, but they're ready to ramp up and begin work as uh, with the guidelines. Most of these projects fit in the guidelines that are available right now. And um, Bill Ford is working really hard on ensuring that our contractors are aware of what the safety requirements are so that um, all of the individuals who are working on our sites are safe. Thank you, Deborah. Uh, any anything else before we? Um, if not, let's vote yes to awarding the bid to Beauregard Construction, or red no if you're opposed. And um, once again, I'm I'm seeing only green green checks. So the motion carries. And um, we may continue. So the last, the last part of the finance committee today, we wanted to bring this to the attention of the board. And I believe everybody received this letter by email too and part of the package. And it was in the finance committee package. We have been approached by vendors of solar and hydro projects lately and to engage in a long-term contract. And we, Robbie is with us today and we had a contract with him I believe five years ago, and um, and uh, and and he has. Uh, you know, we will talk about questions and our next steps. So I'll let uh, both uh, Robbie and um, and Deborah give us, give us their points of view. Would you like me to start, for or just to yeah, set the stage? Sure. Okay. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll I'll be brief. Is this information I'm referring to is um, begins on page eleven? of the finance packet. You should be able to locate it there. Uh, we have been approached by numerous solar uh, net metering providers and more recently again by um, the uh, hydro net metering to engage in contracts which would um, provide a portion of the net metering savings to the school district, a portion maintained by the vendor. Um, and um, there are there are others, individuals, both on the faculty and our students, our administration, who are very, very much in favor of working hard to find ways to incorporate energy savings into our facilities whenever possible. Um, however, there have been some, um, there's a, a few items that are in flux at the moment. Um, some years back, there were um, quite a few um, more positive opportunities through Efficiency Vermont. Um, there, have, there has been a reduction in net metering opportunities for all partners, which the legislature was planning to address this year. However, 
due to the pandemic, um, their conversation on this topic has been postponed. But I think before, more than anything, I think it's necessary for the board to hear what our attorney has had to say about the idea of signing a long-term contract at this time. And that is that he recommends strongly that the board consider hiring a consultant with an energy um, savings background. And there are, are several, some of whom have worked with the district before uh, to examine the contractual obligations um, the long-term impact, and in particular, uh, how what other avenues are available to the board as they think about this, perhaps bringing forward their own and uh, purchasing and installing their own solar uh, arrays, for example, and doing other energy saving uh, kinds of opportunities through um, lease arrangements, and that's mentioned in this memo here. Uh, but in any case, before looking at making any specific decisions, um, our attorney highly recommended that we bring someone on board to help a team of our board and our faculty staff and leadership people to determine what are our future steps in relation to these projects and also um, to be sure that we have, we're making the right decision um, for the district in the long term. I think there's no doubt we are committed to this. Um, Jael um, may want to make a comment. Um, I know that she had reached out to one of the solar providers and uh, they had seemed to have some exciting opportunities, but right now there is a lot of competing priorities and there are um, details about these arrangements. I think the board needs to be informed about before taking action. So I believe that the idea of contracting with a consultant is prudent and it will also give the board time to establish a collective vision for um, the future in this area. So thank you, Deborah. Do you want to? I know there's some board members that have sent comments before too. I'm going to let you explain your point of view too and give us your pros and cons so that we can make an informed decision. Sure, I will. Um, I'll be. I'm, I'll make this in um, three or four points. I'll, I'll quickly describe net metering for the people that I haven't talked to. I will contrast our hydro deal with a potential solar deal. And then I'll make some comments on a suggestion that Kari Bradley had about uh, how we move forward. So first of all, for those of you who don't know that much about net metering, it's a simple, uh, essentially an accounting or financial arrangement. We would generate electricity. The electricity would get credited to your bill or the bill of the various schools in the district, however many that it, it can only get credited to meters that are in the Green Mountain Power um, territory because that's the territory that our generating facility is in. Um, those credits would go on the bills that would save the, the school money, the district money, and the district would pay us, uh, in our deal, the district would pay us 90% of the savings, so the district would get 10% savings. There's no liability, there's no financial connection, there's no uh, physical connection, it's basically a, an accounting arrangement. Um, that's, that's, in a nutshell, that's how metering works. And it can be with any renewable generation, hydro, wind, solar, uh, you know, bio, biomass. Um, our generating facility is located in Eagleton, um, and it's a electric facility. There are some reasons getting to the, the getting to complexity of that metering that is located in Eagleton. Um, can be to get into the complexity else I'm set off my dust. Um, that we think that would be better than solar. But the real reason we think our deal will be better than a solar deal is because our deal is very simple. And um, most solar deals are complicated. <laughs> most solar deals, sorry. My apologies for that. Um, can you guys this still is hear normal me? for a group Zoom meeting. Somebody's dog has to bark. It's part of a group meeting. I know you said you were new to them. So just so you know, it's, it's normal. <laughs> I'm actually blushing a little bit. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, solar deals are structured to benefit investors. Usually those investors are out of state. Um, often those deals are quite complicated. They have provisions that make sure the investors get the return that they were guaranteed when they invested in the project. The solar farms can be built anywhere, uh, once again, in Green Mountain Power Service territory. And um, there are provisions in those deals for 
potential buyouts for penalties if you don't use as much electricity. For, they're just, they get complicated. Um, we structured our deal because it was an early net metering deal. We structured it to be very simple and very safe to the school. No money changes hands unless you save money. So it can never cost the school money. Um, and also, I think it's important to note that, you know, it's a local deal. This is renewable energy that's generated in the same town that the high school is in, and it could go. I'm not sure if all the schools are in Green Mountain Powered uh, Service Territory. I, is, I don't think Rumney is. But it could go to collab, Washington Co-op. So this, this, this generation could be shared with any, um, any, any meter in the district, and that would be true of any net metering deal you did. That wouldn't be different if it were a solar deal. Um, with respect to Kari's proposal, and I'll also make some comments about the energy consultant, Kari's suggestion, which was, I think, a really good suggestion, is that we sign a short-term contract with the school, with the district, and that gives the district the benefit of net metering while the district is going through the process of dealing with an energy consultant, which from the description I've heard, I'm guessing would take probably a year. Um, that, and I would recommend that the way we would structure that deal would be this. We would, the uh, school board would pick a date or, and the contract would go to that date, and at that date, the school board or the superintendent, whoever makes this decision, would decide whether they wanted to continue with the deal or they would decide if they wanted to go and, and find a different deal. Um, and the, the contract we had would extend six months past the point of that decision so that that would give the school time to find a different partner, and that would give us uh, time to find a different partner, too, if the school you know, or, if, or if the district wanted to go that way. I... I also, having a little bit of experience with this now, I guess I would recommend that we structure that contract so the default position is that we keep net metering rather than that it that it ends. Because what happened last time, I think that the contract came to an end. The district was involved in six. No one could move forward with that. And you know, we're a business. We had to make a decision and find a a, a net metering partner. And we got to a point where we had to find a different partner because we couldn't get a a response from then Superintendent Kimball. Um, we've saved that other partner $34,000 the time that we have not been net metering with U32. So that's, you know, that's money that was lost to U32 or into the district to the taxpayers. It just, it was basically free money that was just lost and just lost because of the inertia of trying to, trying to, uh, you know, deal with something complicated while something else complicated was going on. So I'd recommend we structure it in such a way that that the default position is if no decision is made, it keeps going. That's obviously in my advantage, but frankly, I think it's in the district's advantage too. I think that's a that's a very quick summary. Um, let me make a few comments about the energy consultant because I, I think a couple of things are getting conflated here. I think it would be a really good idea for the school and all the schools in the district to study energy efficiency and ways they can we can save on um, you know power usage. Obviously, um, that's one issue. A separate issue is what is the best net metering deal for the school and the district to be in. And, um, you know, those two issues are obviously related because it's a, a related topic, but they're, but they're also different issues. You, which which uh, net metering deal you're in will reduce your energy costs for electricity, regardless of whether you do energy efficiency members, uh, measures or not. So I just think it's important to keep those separate because... Figuring out which is the best net metering deal for you could be relatively quick. Um, doing an energy, you know, audit and understanding of all of the schools in the district is a, is a, is a fairly involved process. I guess I, I guess that's a brief overview. So ask me questions. Thank you, Ravi. I, I think I'm I'm going to let the board members ask questions in general, whether it's from you or or Deborah, and just their thoughts. And I would like to start with uh, Kari and and Jael because they have sent comments before. Sure. Um, I'll just I'll just comment that um, I I had I had that idea. I, I a variation on what Ravi mentioned is. That, I think we should consider it. I, it's not a proposal for me. I think it's something to think about. Um, and I think we—I think there needs to be some process around this, some amount of due diligence on our part. We, we can't just take the first deal that, that is presented to us. On the other hand, part of where the idea comes from is exactly the dynamic that Robbie was describing is that while we 
while we wasted time and ultimately didn't make a decision on the U32 board um, two years ago, we we just simply missed out. So I and I do think it's going to take us at least a year. I mean, I guess I don't fully understand what the consultant would do for us, but I think it's going to take us some time to do the full full due diligence and figure out what our energy plan is. And I'd hate to see us lose another year or more of energy savings and working with a local renewable partner. Um, that, that, that just, that seems like the worst outcome I'd like to avoid. Any others? JL has shared hers in the chat. Any other comments before? I, I'll just Question. chime in. The idea of being able to do something short term and right away to save money in a way that's also good for the environment, good for our communities, since this is a local project. We're not making a long-term commitment. Um, makes sense to me versus a bunch, well, it's only one committee that was recommended. I won't say it inflammatory, like a bunch of committees in a long term, but having a consultant, we could have that going on in the background who could review whether this is the best deal for us or what we should be doing. And um, we're getting the value out of it. Uh, this is a question for Deborah. Yes. Deborah, um, did um, and I'm assuming you're saying attorney is Scott Cameron or yes. someone else? Okay. Scott. Did, did Scott talk about um, how long a period of time the consultant um, would take to, to discuss you know, to review and then um, provide the board with advice about the various options that were available, including um, uh, Robbie Porter's proposal? No, he did not. And that would really depend on how you, uh, how the board tasked the consultant, what you would like him to do. Um, as Robbie said, it could be a large scale um, analysis of every school with an eye toward um, combining energy savings with other facilities work that's underway and that would take multiple months. Um, if we were simply looking at the question of what short term or long term net metering projects should become involved in, that would I'm certain be a much smaller project, uh, shorter period of time. Um, initially when I brought this question to Scott, we were looking at a, a multi-year contract uh, it wasn't until this evening that I was made aware of the possibility of a short-term contract. Uh, I think if the board wishes to pursue that, I definitely would want them to receive the guidance of their attorney, have the contract reviewed, and um, perhaps if not the finance committee, then a subcommittee of the finance committee could take a look at it and have a conversation about it before you were to take action. Um, I think the idea of a short-term contract makes sense. The worry I had about signing on long-term is that it is my understanding that you can only have one net metering project operating in a partnership external to the district at one time, and that it may limit your future ability to do net metering as a with the project with the uh, equipment that you own. Uh, that is was the case a few years ago when I worked in another district. Uh, so I want to be sure that our energy consultant can guide us on that question, uh, and if that's the case, then. We need to tread carefully as to how and as to which long-term projects we sign on to. Um, so I think there's a path forward in the short term, um, and I think it could be relatively quick. Okay, and and Robbie, how should I'm sorry, go on. No, it, it, it finish your question, and then I just I, okay. I, I know um, Robbie, to... Robbie, how, how short term is the shortest short-term contract? that you would be willing to consider? Well, like I said, I think the way we should structure the contract is it goes from whenever we start the contract to a date, and at that date, then, uh, then a decision is made by the school board, and then it continues for six months after that date, and then it terminates. So let's say the school board needs a year to make a decision through an energy consultant. The contract would, would specify that the school board would make a decision by by that year and then the contract would go for another six months so that would be 18 months it does it wouldn't really matter to me you could make a contract 
so the six month window is what's important to me because I need six months to find another partner. And and frankly, the six month window is also important to you because you'll need six months or you'll need some time period to find another partner. So I would say the contract goes for whatever period it goes and then six months beyond that. Okay, so in order to have, a one, to have a one year contract, it would basically have to be a six month contract with a six month endpoint after notice. That's right, that's correct. Okay. So Chris, I would I would suggest that because the finance committee is meeting in two weeks, that that I, I see that the majority of the board, from what I'm seeing from the comments, are interested in looking at some type of short term, and also in, in support of the you know of having a, a consultant. So I think we we do need to do diligence in this issue. So we would come back to the board with some solid. A proposal so that they can make up a, a, their mind a, at the not necessarily at the meeting on the 20th because that would be the first time that we're meeting and I know that Robbie is under a, the gun also for a decision but we we, we do need to do this uh, responsible and I think there is a path forward like everybody said can I make a suggestion um, to, to, uh, a suggestion and comment I guess one is I, I think it might be useful if I talk to Scott Cameron, the, I assume he knows something about net metering contracts or, or he's a lawyer anyway, I could explain to him, it, it seems like it's difficult to do that in this, in this uh, context, but I could certainly explain to him what our contract is. In fact, I could show him our contract, which was uh, you know, approved by the previous attorney, Paul Giuliani. Um, I've, I've already shared so the contract with him, Rabbi. I, okay. I did share that contract, but his advice is for us to have an uh, expert in energy to re to discuss the um, the whole landscape and his expertise is is within contract review, so, um, so that's why he wait, did that. Wait, wait, can we just Deborah? Can we just let Robbie finish his point because I, I think he was focused on the short term piece and I just wanted to hear that out. Well, mm -hmm. the, the, there's the short term piece for me is this, you know, I brought this up I think six or seven weeks ago with 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 Deborah in an email and we've you know we've progressed to this point. But the time is ticking on the other side of my other partner who's told me I need to find a new you know, partner. And so I feel like you know, I either need something pretty concrete coming out of this meeting that, you know, that we're moving forward, or else I need to start shopping this to, to other, you know, other schools and potentially other businesses too, because I don't really know how much time I've got left. So hands down, in every way, I would rather partner with, you, with the Washington Central District. I mean, it just makes, it makes every bit of sense to me. It did the last time too, though, and I kind of got stopped out. So I want to make sure that you know we, there's a concrete step that's moving forward, or else I've I've really got to start looking somewhere else because time keeps rolling on. So, Robbie, what would what would make you feel like it was moving forward if we if we directed um, uh, Deborah or the the finance committee to come back to the next meeting with a short term contract? Or I'm just trying to understand what would satisfy you, but would also give us uh, the time to make sure you know we've read the words, and you know we can't we can't tell you we're going to sign a contract without reading it tonight. So, um, just trying to understand a little bit better what no, would I, be the middle ground. No, I certainly don't didn't, don't and didn't expect you, and, and frankly, wouldn't want you to sign a contract tonight. That would be irresponsible right. for all of us. Um, if, but that's why I brought up talking to Scott Cameron. Yes, if if we came back to another meeting I don't, in a, in a month, in two weeks, I, I can't remember exactly what Flora said. And you had a contract, and you'd consulted with Scott Cameron, and you were ready to make a decision, yes or no, about do we can we sign this contract? You know, even if that was in a month, and then you had to make that decision a couple of weeks later, I could live with that. But putting it off in a way where it's going to be discussed again at another meeting and then kick down the road, you know, then I, I can't. That's just not enough for me to go on. So yeah, okay. I would love to, love to communicate with Scott, explain to him. Well, may, maybe you guys should discuss among yourselves the the suggestion that Kari brought up and and maybe this would be more effective done in email but if we could come out with sort of conceptually what that what that proposal would look like we could take that to Scott and say Scott uh you know can you can you see putting this in a contract that we could vote yes or no on in a month or or even six weeks I mean I can I can live that long if there's going to be a hard decision but it's got to be a hard decision coming up at some point um, and if you want to, you know, if you want to have a meeting in a couple of weeks and discuss it again, and then and then have a hard decision in a couple of weeks after that and vote, that that's fine with me too. I'm, 
but I, I feel like we need to take some concrete steps, and those probably ought to be relating to getting language that we think we could like in the contract, and then you guys can decide mm -hmm. to put on that contract. So, Robbie, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry if it was confusing. I think Deb, Deborah and Chris both have comments, but I, but I think what we're saying is I'm seeing, unless somebody raises their hand, I'm seeing in the chat that there is, a, and from people that talk, there is an interest in looking at a short term. So what I'm proposing is that we're meeting on the 20th, the finance committee is meeting on the 20th, between now and then, we will look at options that include having conversations with you and Scott Cameron so that we can present to the board some, hopefully by the 20th, but if not the 20th, you know, I, I understand you have a, a time limit, but we also have to work within our, our structure. So we're, we're not committing, but we're saying we're gonna look at it promptly on the 20th and we'll have those conversations and get back to you, you know. Robert, I'm going to let you know that. May I, may I suggest that if, Robert, yeah. if you would like to draft that one-year contract and um, then forward mm -hmm. it to me and I will have Scott review it and get and get information to the board by the 20th. That would be my suggestion on next steps. Okay, so may, let me clarify something on that, Deborah. If we're talking about a year, it means really a six month contract with a six year with a six month notice, if that's what right. you're talking about. Because a year contract would actually be 18 months potentially. I've heard okay, so let's, they should be clear in your motion what you're seeking. Seeking. Is that addressed to me? I don't know. I'm I think I'm I think what happened uh, Chris, be clear in terms yeah. of the term of the contract, Chris, I was, you were asking, is it a year or 18 months? So I think that your motion should be clear. Um, Carrie has his hand up. Sorry. It's okay, Chris. I wrote in the chat, but I, I think we right. should consider something longer term. Rob, Robbie, mm -hmm. Robbie said he doesn't care. I think it's going to take us a while to find a, find a consultant and work through that process. And you know, if it, if you know, two years is, is in, next year is going to be so difficult for planning. Let's just buy ourselves a little more time. That's my opinion. You, Carrie, I think we, I think we would have the time either way. Um, just because I think what we're talking about is just having a contract that goes on and on without an end point unless the board decides to end it. So I think the way he was talking about, and correct if I'm wrong on that, um, Robbie, right. that it mm -hmm. would be. Let me clarify something. There's a there's a natural point to end the contract in 2032, because and this gets into the arc, arcane laws of net metering. But we're governed for 20 years under a certain set of rules that were established when we got our certificate of public good, and that will go until 2032. At which time the rules governing our particular project <coughs> potentially, not certainly, but potentially, will be different. So 2032 is a natural end point for the contract or con point for the contract to be reassessed. So my suggestion would be that you guys choose a date, a year, 18 months, two years, you know, you choose a date and we do this short-term contract for that time period. When that time period comes, if you guys want to continue, then it continues and it defaults or continues until 2032. Not not on not not unending. I, as a business, I can't continue it unending past 2032 because I don't even know what the circumstances of net metering will be at that point. They'll, they will definitely or almost certainly they'll change for us at that point. So short term defaulting to 2032 if it's if we want to go on. That would be my suggestion. And I'm Stephen happy Luke. to draft. Stephen Luck. So. <clears throat> Let me make an observation first, and then I have a recommendation on how we might go forward. Um, I don't think the school board should be engaged in establishing a contract um, with a provider in a school board meeting. It's completely inappropriate. However, I understand the timeliness of this situation. So what I would offer is a suggestion, and I would rely on you, Robbie, on what's practical or not practical. Um, that we need to move tonight. And is it any more difficult to write a six month contract that we know would expire in a year and a one year contract that we know would expire in 18 months. So then when it comes to us for a vote in a decision, 
then we can begin to weigh those. Would we rather have a six month or we would rather have a year? And it, it gives us a time mm -hmm. to look at them, gives us a little more time to understand it. Is it reasonable to ask that two contracts be written, one shorter and one longer? And then it gives us a chance to weigh all that stuff. And we, Chris, then we don't need to get debate tonight on whether it's a six months or Curry, mm -hmm. it's a one year. We have two contracts that we can look at. Sure. I think that's fine. I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's just a question of dates. We could just leave the dates open. You guys can, you know, pick the dates. It's, right. You know. Right. I don't think you need two contracts. I just think you need one that doesn't have the dates specified or that has the option as we look at the draft. Yeah, that's a great idea. And I agree that it doesn't bog us down in this debate tonight, which I'm completely in favor of, Stephen. So, so Robbie, uh, um, do we understand that you're going to um, share a draft with Deborah for um, review by Scott Cameron? That's exactly what I'll do. And just so we're on the same page, we'll leave the dates open. Um, we'll specify how the dates should work. You know, it, the, the the six months after mm -hmm. make a decision. At point, six months after that, um, I guess the only there's two other pieces. One is because the contract, when the contract terminates, the termination date in the contract, do we make it so that if no action is taken, it defaults to 2032, or do we make it so that we have to go through another board meeting and warning and everything? If, in other words, the school should have the option to terminate, but if the school wants to continue, does that default go on? Do you want it written that way? That's question number one. Um, uh, my, my inclination would be that we write it with some way for it to continue so that if we, you know, if we say, uh, you know, miss the deadline by a month, we don't break the whole thing apart. But 2032 um, sounds like too long. So I think we need something that is allows the, some some kind of, um, you know, flexibility that you're describing. That actually makes sense to me. I, I tend to I prefer contracts that are written that way, too, for the reason you described. I would not feel comfortable saying 2032 if we missed the deadline because we, you know, got bogged down in something. So, um, but I, I get your point and I would be supportive of something that would, you know, not, not let it fall apart just because we couldn't get our act together, which is I think what you're asking for. I think to Stephen's point though, we are now negotiating a contract at a board meeting. And I think in my, I would highly recommend that this um, item be continued yeah. at your finance committee meeting with, documents to review sure. and different options to discuss. Okay. I, well, I don't, yeah, I, I'm not sure we're really negotiating because I think we're just, yeah, I don't think so either. Example well, language. Let me make one other explanation because I can see this could cause confusion later on. In the original contract, which we will just modify for, for these time periods, the allocation of the generation credits was very specific and it went to the Shapiro building and the supervisory union building and 32 in the con contract that we propose, we will have all of the generation applied to the U32 meter. That does not mean that, that all that generation has to go to the U32 meter. It just means that I can't create a proposal contract without putting account numbers from the other potential meters that we might want to put in the contract in that contract. However, if we dump 100% of the generation on the U32 meter, we don't have to change the contract. I can just call Green Mountain Power and say, now we want to allocate to these other meters. So if we want to bring in other schools in the district, it's a question of a phone call, not a question of modifying the contract. But that's going to be something that I'm sure we'll have to discuss when it comes up. I just want to give you a heads up that that's going to look like that. Great. Okay. okay. So you're right, and you'll be communicating with Deborah. Is that is that correct, Deborah? Yes, is that how you understand? Correct. Okay, right. very good. As soon as I can get you. a contract, I will get it to Deborah. Okay, um, Fleur. Uh, one so that it finishes the finance committee, and and I think one clarification question that has come up also is that it just uh, when we talk about this, is that why does this contract doesn't have to go out to bid? Robbie, could you elaborate on that? Sure. This is not a contract in a traditional sense. Um, first of all, the school is not spending any money. The the school simply is not. You know, the, we structured the original contract. The one we'll be revising so that it only saved the school money. There was no circumstance in which it would ever cost the school money. Um, 
so I, I guess that's in the lawyer told us the, fir the first time around that it was essentially not necessary even for it to be, I think, in front of the school board for that reason, that it could be simply decided by the superintendent, if I remember correctly. Um, so you're not buying anything. You're just paying a fee that's equal to a percentage of what you save. And I think that's why it doesn't need to be treated like a contract. The other difference in this contract, most contracts are uh, adversarial, or at least there are two sides to the contract. This contract is structured so that the school's interests and my interests are aligned. And when we generate electricity, it saves the school or the district money. So there's not that sort of adversarial component to it that you would have in a typical contract. Um, you know, there's no, there's no circumstance where what's good for me isn't also good for you. Okay. We, we are committing an asset in terms of committing ourselves to a period of time uh, where you know, we are the beneficiaries of the production and signing over. It, it does deal with tangible benefit, even though there's no you know, physical structure or anything like that. And, and I would want an opinion that it's not a contract on the bid part. Yeah. So, and, no, and just to Deborah, Deborah, I see is taking note. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Um, so, Fleur, uh, are are we completely finished then with finance? With finance? Yeah. Yeah. I'm with questions. Yeah. Um, it, there. It says overview of budget projection. That was what we did. Um, or is this? Okay. So. We're not talking about the um, the state side of things, which would be fine with me if we're not. Okay. No, I'm no, because we have enough. Thank you, Robbie. Nice Thank you, Robbie. You. I'll look forward to hearing good. from you. I, okay, yeah. good. I, good. I think what I I think what we agree was that our projections look really look really good for now, and that there is more information that is coming from the state on Friday and on the fifth. So I think we need more information from the state in order to really do better projections to share with the board that. So I don't, I don't think it's necessary unless somebody really okay. Mm -mm. Great, okay. Thank you very much, Flor, um, and everyone. So moving on to the consent agenda, uh, do we have a motion to approve the minutes of April 15? So moved. Thank you, Jill. Second? Second. <laughs> Lindy seconds. Thank you. Um, any uh, any changes um, or anything that needs correcting on the minutes for April 15? Uh, I should just mention that I received a comment from um, a member of the public who felt that the board members ought to be mentioned before the administrators. And uh, I gather that it, they might have been flipped. Um, I, I, I merely mention it. It doesn't need to be changed on the April 15. On the um, minutes. On, on the minutes, right. But um, that's your, you are correct. They should be listed first. Okay. Absolutely. Um, that was the member of the public, an, an alert citizen. Um, Very alert. <laughs> more alert than I am, I'll say. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Um, okay, uh, so if there are no, um, no changes to the minutes, please vote yes or no. <clears throat> and um, again, I'm, oh, Jonas, yeah, sorry. All right, this is just about minutes. I realized, uh, uh, Lindy and Stephen, we did not approve the minutes of uh, the executive sessions during the last negotiating session. Um, I'm not sure how to do that at this point. You could do that at your next negotiations meeting on Monday. Great, great. Thank you very much. Um, so all agreeing, um, everybody, uh, everybody approves. Thank you very much. Um, now, a uh, motion to approve the board orders, please. Have them from our packet. Does anybody have them handy to read the? 
Sorry, Chris? Yeah, so do we not need to do this by email? I'm confused about how we do this now. The email goes around, and I, I'm just confused about it. The, the email, uh, as I understand it, the email stands for our signature. But, oh, um, I see. Got in it. This, in the same way that, um, that we vote in a regular meeting, we do it um, orally as well. Okay, got it. I was confused. Thank you. We move that we approve board orders in the amount of $354,001.83 and in the amount of $23,597.22. Thank you. Chris moves. Uh, second. I'll second it. Floor seconds. Lisa, were you able to get those figures? Do you have those? Yeah, I have them in the, in the email. So. Great. Excellent. Okay. Super. Um, any uh, any questions about the board orders before we go to a vote? No questions. Very good. All in favor, please click yes. All opposed, please click no. Once again, um, all green lights. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, now, um, it occurs to me that we have not heard from Towns, um, if Towns is still here. Would there be any objection among the board before we hit the personnel um, piece to, um, to just touch base with Towns? No. Or, or, and, and Mia, if she's here too. Yeah, Mia, you're still here as well. I don't know if Towns is still here, but Mia is here, or she seems to be. Yeah. Um, her. Um, there she is. I may have I may have waited too long to get to the students. I'm here, Scott. You're here. Um, can we just check in, Mia, please, and what um, how you're doing and what your um, what your net network says. Oh, my network. Um, <laughs> a lot of pressure. <laughs> Everyone's kind of finding a schedule-ish. Sorry, I'm just going to continue without the die, so I'm finding a um, Really, no, I think it's going as well as can be expected mm. with everything that's happening. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you have any specific things that you were wondering? Um, yeah, I, I guess a lot hinges on um, how much can be expected. Um, what about, I, I, I have to say, I, I, I was very touched to see all of, the, all of the lawn signs that were set out for seniors. Yeah, those were really great. I think a lot of people, everybody yeah. was surprised when they got out, but very happily surprised. I think it's yeah. a really great thing. So. Yeah. Um, how does it feel yeah. to, to the seniors to um, to have you know basically your senior year um, kind of decapitated? <laughs> Sorry, I mean. Um. <laughs> yeah, Mia. How does that feel? <laughs> yeah, to be decapitated. Um. <laughs> he can't speak because. <laughs> All right, all right. Poor choice of words. I apologize. Where's, where's Washington Irving when you need him? I think considering what other people are having to do with this crisis, like all the essential workers and everything that they've been doing, I think it's nice for me personally to put it in perspective and say like, well, oh man, like I don't have to wake up at 7 a.m. every morning like gosh what like I don't have to sacrifice that much for everything that's going on and I think it's Good sentimental answer. in a way like it's sad that I won't be able to spend the last kind of quarter I guess of my senior year with the rest of my class but compared to what other people are giving up it's really not a big thing yeah and, and how is it going in continuing your classes? Do you feel like you're able to make progress? And, and I know 
considering the circumstances. Yeah, uh, so I'm taking more advanced classes. So my teachers were already very involved in making sure, like even before school got out, some of my teachers were making plans. This is what we're going to be doing if we're not going to be able to meet in person anymore. And I think because of that, I've been able to continue my learning quite easily, but I know that some of my other peers haven't had as much work it, that I haven't had as much work as I have. And it really depends on what classes you're taking, which isn't necessarily a good thing. Yeah. Sorry, did anybody else have a question for Mia? I don't have a question, but Mia, I just want to say that um, your perspective is so amazing, but I am essential. I'm a nurse and um, the sacrifice that you and your class have to give right now and just not being able to get that back, it is a huge, it's a huge deal. And um, I celebrate your, your outlook on it, but also I really just wish you guys the best of luck and give yourself your chance to work through that and more than that and just appreciate all the hard work that you've done and um i just thank you for all that you've put through um with this board and in, in the past year so thank you that's that's wonderfully said marilyn uh, i i can only agree and um and mia i guess you understand that your this class this class of seniors is historic and will never be forgotten. And I hope will never be repeated either. Um, so completely agree with, with Marilyn. Are, are we good? Shall we move on? Thank you, Stephen. Very nice, yeah. Um, okay, so to personnel, um, 7.1, approve hires, resignations, retirements. We have an entire sheet on this, I believe. Yes, and um, it's interesting having three or four of us working in different parts of the state, um, collaborating and pulling together documents. So um, it isn't unusual in the spring of the year for there to be last minute changes. But in your email this evening, I sent you a final version. So if you've not had a chance to check that, please do. I will read these aloud just to be sure everyone uh, has an understanding of what we're bringing forward. Um, well, first of all, thanks to our principals and central office administrators for their hard work in bringing these high quality candidates forward for your consideration. Uh, the first is Julia Pritchard, who is um, to replace Bill Dice, the uh, special service coordinator at uh, both the District and U32. If you recall, Bill is taking a position in Montpelier and has uh, resigned uh, recently. <clears throat> and um, we'd also like to recommend Jamie Spector, school social worker and behavior specialist, who would be a district employee. And she would take on some of the work that we have previously contracted out to Washington County Mental Health, uh, supervising BIs and uh, working closely with students, families, and staff, um, of students who have behavioral support needs. Uh, Allison Burns, a math teacher for U32. Haley Fitzgerald, a special educator for U32. Michael Sotherby, a PE teacher. Rumney and Doty. Michael was hired late last year uh, after July 1st, so he was on a one-year contract and we're bringing him back in on a permanent basis now. Uh, Bonnie Dunham, Associate School Nurse, Romney, um, Amy Erling, Science Teacher, U32, Noelle Pernard, Classroom Teacher, Second Grade in East Montpelier, James Warden, uh, Classroom Teacher, 5-6 in Callis, and Jessica Aguizzi, Classroom Teacher, 5-6 Berlin. Jessica is also uh, one of those individuals who came to us late and uh, we're offering a permanent contract for her. Um, we have more positions that are currently posted and we anticipate bringing um, additional recommendations to you at the next meeting for new hires. But I think this is a very, very fine group of people and we 
uh, strongly recommend your consideration for their employment. Thank you, Deborah. Um, may we may we move these uh, hirings as a as a slate, as a group? Okay. Um, I'll, I'll welcome a motion to um, to approve the the hirings of these teachers. Kai. I'll move that we accept the recommendation for new hires. Thank you. Kari moves. Do we have a second? Second it. It's Lindy. Thank you, Lindy. <clears throat> All right. Any further discussion? Yes, Scott. This is Steve. Yes. Um, I'm just, I'm unfamiliar with the term associate school nurse. Is that the same thing as a school nurse? Yes. It's a matter of the um, preparation and training. Um, right now, you may become a school nurse with an associate's degree specializing in the study of nursing. Uh, and then once you obtain your bachelor's degree, then you move to um, the bachelor's column. But either one of those is acceptable. And um, we've had a number of people who've come up through the ranks as associate nurses and then become um, a full bachelor's nurse. That's fine, Deborah. I, I just, I hadn't yeah. seen the term before. I'm fine with yeah. it. Any other questions or, uh, yeah, Marilyn. Is um, the, is Sharon um, a licensed social worker? Jamie? Um, Jamie, sorry, yes. That's okay. Um, I believe she is, uh, Je Kelly, do you recall? Yeah, I believe she is licensed. Yes, yeah. she is. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of experience as well working with um, students. In fact, um, she and she's been working with students in our region as well, outside of the public schools and within. So and she's very dynamic. I think she'll do a great job. Wonderful. Thanks. Um, any any other questions? If not, um, let's move to a vote. All in favor of approving this group of teacher nominations, as moved by Kari and seconded by Lindy. Please click yes on your participants box. If you oppose, please click no. And again, all the green. The motion carries. Their hirings are approved. Um, I, I see there is no retirement. Is that correct, Deborah? No retirements this this month. Um, this meeting, uh, we do have a resignation though. Um, Sadly, uh, Brian Brian, excuse me, Healy uh, from U32, a science teacher, is resigning her position effective at the end of the school year. And um, you recommend approval of this? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, any questions? No questions. Then let's go to a vote. All in favor of approving the resignation of Brianna Healy. Please click yes. We need a motion. Oh yeah, we thank you, Jonas. We do. I jumped the gun there. Um, would you like to move it? I will move that we accept the resignation. Of thank Bianca you. Healy. Thank you. Um, second. I'll second it. Thank you, Flora. Um, so now we can vote on it. Um, please click green for approve, red for oppose. And once again, all green, thank you. Um, the resignation is approved. Now, uh, would you like to continue, Deborah? Yes, we have one leave of absence request for one year. Uh, and this is from uh, Christine Hertz-Hausman, who is currently working at Jody. Um, and this is a, um, a family related request without being too specific. <laughs> A little later on, you'll notice uh, that there's a change in FTE. She was also uh, seeking a reduction in FTE from full-time to 0.5 as well, which, um, and then I'll just continue if I may on the change in FTE that will wrap up the page. Um, due to um, our incoming employees in the district, we there are some savings and the one of the things that our administrators had uh, originally proposed uh, in our early days of our budget work back in the fall was to increase Maria Malikos 
from a 0.9 to 1.0. She is our school nurse in um, who is shared right now between Callis and Dodie. Um, we feel that with um, our incoming teachers and the savings, we've been able to calculate that um, we can increase her to a full-time position, which would provide her with uh, another half day, and um, that would be devoted to Dodie School. Um, it's a recommendation, first of all, that Maria would support, and one that uh, we think would be very good, particularly in light of the increased role of the school nurse in the coming year. Okay, hey, thanks. So um, I guess the first thing we'll need is a, um, is a motion to approve the leave of absence request for Christine Hertz Hausman. I'll move that. Can Chris I moves. Second. Second it. Diane, second Thank you, it. Diane. Diane seconds. So um, I, I noticed there, at least on my, uh, what I'm looking at, there's no um, administrative recommendation. Does the administration have a recommendation? Uh, we do recommend approval. Uh huh. Okay. Any questions from board members? Stephen. Um, if if we grant her a leave of absence, how are we going to reduce her from a one to a half? Actually, her leave will leave, will be a half time leave. Um, it is it's something that she had requested and planned for before um, the other. Um, situation arose. So she's looking at a, a full year leave at the halftime position. So I should correct that. You're right. It doesn't add up otherwise. And it's not a full, full year. It's a sometime in the end of September starting and then for the rest of the year. Oh, it says one year on my list here. I'm sorry, Gillian. It may be that there's a, an error, but. Um, yeah, well, this was like, this was a complicated one because of the timing. Mm -hmm. um, so you're saying her leave of absence is not for one year, or it is for one year? The, the, no, the, um, can I just back up and go from the beginning, otherwise I get confused, is that yeah. she had wanted to drop down to part-time mm -hmm. for professional reasons, and I support keeping her there. She's an incredibly gifted educator, so half of Christine is better than no Christine. Um, and then she has had a um, increasing family issue come up. I don't even know what I'm allowed to say about that, but anyway. That, That's as that, much as we ought to say. <laughs> yeah, and so she, uh, so as we were talking about the switching down to part-time so that she could pursue some of her other professional interests, this other issue came up so that she would be starting the year with us at Doty um, until probably late September when the other issue issues, and then she's requesting leave for the remainder of the year for that. So, so thank you for clarifying that. So the halftime precedes the full year leave, well, nearly full year, which would start at the, after September. Right. Yeah. Right. So if we look at uh, according to the calendar, it's they're correct, but the dates aren't clear for you. So our apologies. Does that make more sense now with the explanation? Um, uh, where does that leave us with the motion? Do we need to change well, the motion? Um, we would be looking for we, her we, up, up, you to approve her change in FTE and her leave of absence. So as a as a compound package. Mm -hmm. And just as a point of clarification, there is a letter from her that explains what, what her request is. So um, so I realize there are limits to what we can discuss, but we did receive a copy of the letter. So I think we're all aware of yeah. her. I don't think it's a big secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's just not something that you typically discuss in open session for your in your minutes. But you know, if you wanted to, to talk about it in private, I just I feel like people's uh, Know, personal health and so on is really not something to talk about in, in your open minutes. Yeah. And this, Steven, this is Steve. I mean, I brought it up. I, I support whatever we need to do to adequately support her. I, I'm just talking technically, if we re approve mm -hmm. a year of absence, then she's not working. Or if we approve a reduction from one FTE to five FTE, that's for a year. 
unless there's some other language. I just want to approve what's going to accomplish right. what we want it to accomplish. I'm, right. I'm so, not objecting to anything. I'm sure. just saying mm -hmm. I, what's been presented to me doesn't make any sense. So we have an employee who is coming in September who will work half time if you give us approval to have her contract reduced from one to 0.5. And then after September, she'll be on leave for the remainder of the year. That's what the request is. And, it, and I apologize that it wasn't made more clear in the notes uh, or in our explanation, but Gillian did a good job of explaining it and we're hopeful that you'd be willing to approve it. It's our recommendation. Okay. Um, who, what, what does she teach? Literacy. She, she's a literacy interventionist and coach. Okay, so is it, um, is, because it just seems odd to me to have someone start and then stop after a month. Um, and having, and, and then is she going to be absent from the school completely, or is she going to work part time for at, from the end of September? From the end of September, she would be absent from completely, completely okay. for the remainder of the year through June of 2021. So, uh, are we going to have someone as a substitute then, uh, so, filling that half time position as an interventionalist? So Chris, uh, sort of where the thinking is at right now is the way Christine's position is structured. She is half-time literacy interventionist, half-time literacy coach. So mm -hmm. in dropping down to the point five, she would keep the literacy coach coaching portion of her job. Um, and I think she's thinking of being part-time for more than just this one year. So this is um, a career move for her, at least in this point in her life. So I do actually have some people in the pipeline who could then pick up, you know, could be considered for, you know, after the posting the positions, but I've got feelers out for people who could fill the 0.5 literacy interventionist portion for, of her position starting at the beginning of the year. And then the benefit though of having her Christine still there, even part-time is that she can provide support and coaching, some intensive coaching and work with the person who would take her position. For the, the literacy interventionist portion of her position. Does that make sense? Well, it does, if, but you're saying, to, and that will be for a month and then she goes on leave completely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay, that, that is better clarification. Thank you. Um, Lindy. Is our, the board packet with all of these papers, public information? We did not publish it on the, on the website, no. But would it be, if somebody had asked me for information I'd gotten for this board meeting, is it public information? If you were in a board meeting and you had a handout on the table, it's public. So yes. Because I'm finding it's it not, very not weird. Not posted on the website. The, the recommendation was posted, but not all the nomination forms. Um, is that what you're asking about the nomination? Well, I just forms? find it weird that we can't say the word maternity leave. We do in every board meeting I've been in. And I think that clarifies things why Chris is wondering why is she coming for a month? <laughs> Sorry. Late. True. Um, and, and for that reason, perhaps it sounds to me as though we may need to amend the, the existing motion. Um, would, would someone... Um, I, I, I made the motion on to... Um, authorize uh, or to propose that we grant um, the leave um, starting in late September um, and uh, grant a request for leave of absence starting in late September of the school year. And, and um, I also about the FTE part. Reduce your FTE that? to 50% to also was part of the request. Okay. And, and that we also grant the request to reduce the FTE from 0.1 to 
2.5, from 1.0 to 0.5. Second it again. Wonderful. Okay, Stephen. Can I just make a friendly motion? I'm being a stick in the mud, I'm sorry. Could, could the motion be we approve a reduction of one FTE to 0.5 FTE through the last day of September and then effective the first day of October, we approve a full-time leave of absence for the remainder of the school year. It would no, be you can't. You can't be specific about a date for this purpose because you don't know when the person may have to leave. So you you can't give okay. a specific start. I, I, okay. Uh, I'll, okay. That's fine. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> Thanks for trying to keep us on the straight and narrow. We're, we're, we're losing Jill. We have to move on this. We're losing Jill. Yeah. Oh dear. This is killing me. <laughs> Okay, so if there is no further discussion, so as not to lose Jill Olson or anybody else for that matter, all in- I, I saw a few other people had their faces in their hands. Just, I'm just saying. Yeah, Kai, <laughs> you're doing it, Dr. Fauci. <laughs> okay, um, all in favor of uh, the mo motion as restated by Chris and re-seconded by Diane, um, which just to summarize, reduces the uh, FTE of Christine Hertz Hausman from 1.0 to 0 0.5 and grants her leave of absence request, um, please click green. If you're opposed, click red. Very good, all green, motion carries. All right, now, um, hopefully the next one won't be um, quite so uh, complicated. Dental. So uh, we, we're on to Maria Melikos. Looking to increase her FTE from 0.9 to 1.0 with Very savings good. we've already established. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. Thank you, Lindy. <laughs> uh, do, uh, and Jill seconds. Very good. Any further discussion of this? Flora shakes her head. And so let's move to a vote. All in favor of approving the change in FTE for Maria Malikos by 0 0.1 from 0 0.9 to 1.0, please click green. Red if you're opposed. And it's all green. Thank you very much. Now, Floor, um, unless I'm um, missing something, uh, over to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll be very quick. I was wondering if, as you know, as as a board and a district, we could. Uh, and I know that there's teachers and uh, administrators in the call too, but it, it won't be a surprise for them. But I was I was hoping that we, because it's appreciation week for the teachers, that maybe we could budget something more meaningful because they've been working extra hard in this COVID times. And even if it's like I, you know, one proposal was maybe uh, give certificate from Burp on books, which helps our local economy and send one to all of the teachers in the district. I, I know that we're in saving mode, but also the numbers didn't look as horrible today. And so I was wondering if we could appreciate the teachers in something more than just us saying we appreciate you. I believe I, that I for I believe have done cards. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I believe that every principal was um, either in the process of or has been preparing and sending cards with a small gift card uh, inserted. It wasn't exactly the same in every school, but that that effort was definitely, yeah. our sentiment was the same and we were um, planning on doing that. But those of you who are here still, if you uh, want to make comments about what you've done specifically, it's been a little bit different from school to school, but we have absolutely had them in our minds. So Mary Lynn has a question first. Yeah, yeah I, I Definitely, I'm sure that the principals are doing an amazing job, and I know that the PTOs are too. But as a board, I would love for us as a as a committee, as a school committee, to be able to put our heads together as the 15 of us and think of something specific for us, which we have done that in the past. We've given them breakfast or lunch or something like that. We can't do that. So um, I would I support. I'd love to do something from from all of us. Other views? Floor, did you have a, a, an amount in mind? 
I, I I did not have an amount in my I I was thinking you know between fifteen and twenty dollars I I don't know like at least one book I know all teachers love to love to read and and they more likely might not even use it for themselves knowing them but it, that was just one option you know everything else seemed a little bit too expensive right a basket of flowers or you know more a lot harder to send and I don't want to undermine any effort that the principals are doing from there. I, I just felt what that it was something from from us, you know, that we appreciate them because that, you know, I know that they're appreciated at their individual schools. It's just like a little extra thing. And I might be mm -hmm. on my own with Marilyn on this, but it, I, you know, or if you guys felt comfortable with you know coming up with a proposal that we send to you before, you know, it wouldn't go out this week, obviously but it, it would mean something if we said something during teacher appreciation week. But I'm happy to hear from other principals if they would be uh, discouraged or offended by such a gesture. <laughs> well, let's see, would, um, I see that Alicia has her light on. Uh, <laughs> did you wanna make a comment, Alicia, about what's happening in East Montpelier? No, I'm happy to share what um, what we did as so the elementary principals um, have been in coordination together and I know U32 has done something as well. We just sent all of our teachers um, up and staff, not just the teachers, a personal card um, with a gift card in it to local different local vendors. So that was all of our elementary schools and Stephen, did you want to speak to U32? Something yeah, so similar. Yeah, so U32 sent a card as well from the administrative team to all of our educators, and uh, we gave them uh, a link to a uh, Google form so that they could choose a gift card from one of the uh, many uh, local vendors, because we just, we felt like we could spread it around a little bit more to any business that was associated with our district through parents, kids, uh, alumni, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, with a few exceptions, we, we didn't do just strictly alcohol-based businesses or things like that, but, um, but um, we, can, we can understand the desire for that, but uh, but we felt like those might not be appropriate for public. Uh, it was some funds that we had available that were discretionary, mainly through work that some of our teachers have done, and so uh, so it was really nice uh, to, uh, to be able to honor them that way. Did you get a response back on their Google form of like where they preferred? So the cards hit uh, a lot of the uh, houses today. So we're getting back those and we'll see kind of where they wanted, um, where they wanted to spend their money. Um, so we had a unique dollar amount in this as well. It was $19 for COVID-19. Um, and so we felt like that was uh, add a little humor to the whole piece, but uh, it was something that we were, we felt fortunate to be able to do because of this discretionary funds that we had. I think it's a great idea. I just wonder um, what staff, though, that we, um, you know, just wanting to be mindful of, you know, as Alicia was saying, all staff that um, we're showing appreciation for. So just clarity around how we do that. Everyone. Everyone, yeah. Yeah, so we just said everyone. Yeah, everyone should, yeah. Right. And I think I would, we should, if we do it at all, we do, I, I would support doing it for everybody. So uh, maybe we've done that maybe. this week, and, and then there have been uh, some really great um, exchanges between and among teachers um, with just celebrations and, and patting one another on the back and, and some funny exchanges. It's been great. They're making the most of this week. Lindy? Well, I've noticed on the East Montpelier's PTNO um, Facebook page, the kids are holding up signs and I really think that's where this appreciation comes from, is from the schools and from the families or the parents. And I'm a teacher, but I just, I wonder about the board spending money on it when the fiscal realities are a little bit not great. But from a town perspective, I was thinking, you know, I could go on that PTNO page and put something right there as a board member in this community, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah. I just, I wonder about the kind of swag. I know a gift certificate isn't, but it, it adds up. And if we're doing everybody in the district, it really adds up. And when Floor asked us to mm -hmm. 
you know, put a picture or make a poster or something. I, I went into the story box and I found all these little pins I've gotten over the years of teacher appreciation pins and things. They're very nice. And usually they're from parents or whatever. But I just, I wonder about the, the spending of the money. And I sound like a real grump because I certainly appreciate teachers yeah. and people are working harder than they've ever worked. Other views? Okay. I just wanted to have the discussion. So I, I think we could say that our science today demonstrate our appreciation for the teachers in, in, uh, and we'll try to be you know, part of the planning for next year. <laughs> I, I'm going to make, I think we should make, a, uh, I'm going to make a motion that we follow up on Poor's recommendation because um, as Governor Cuomo has said, you can say, yeah, we appreciate, we appreciate, but, um, you know, following, backing up with, it's even, it's just a token, really, even if it's like $20, it's a token. Uh, and the, I think the, um, improvement to morale, um, that we're thinking of them in a tangible way. Um, it just, it, it's well received and contributes to a, a great climate in supplement to what the principals have already done. Um, so I'm gonna move that we, um, and I like Stephen's idea where Stephen um, Dellinger Pates, who has very long names, um, um, recommendation about letting teachers choose where to use that money um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move that we um, um, spend $20 for our, each of our personnel uh, to show our appreciation during this week of appreciation um, because it has been a challenging year uh, for, for um, all of our staff members. Do we have any idea what that adds up to, to what the total would be? Deborah, how many employees would it be? Had your hand up. I I didn't count them. Go ahead, Lori. Probably about seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah. It'd be about three seventy five, roughly, employees. Okay. Stephen. Um, I'm I'm not opposed to any action we take. Uh, we can't take action on a budget item tonight. It has to be properly warned. So anything we want to do, we could decide tonight and that we would still have to vote on it and warn it at the next meeting. We, we can't take action on a budget item that's not warned. Right. Point well taken, thank you. I have to say, that sounds like a lot of money to me at this moment in time. I, I, I totally get Floor's point, but I, I don't know. I, uh, I also get Lindy's point, I guess. And I, I recall um, what Stephen Luke said at one of our recent meetings about, um, you know, making decisions about other people's money uh, that we need to proceed with all due deliberation. Um, and Lindy has a, has a comment here as well. Um, yeah. Um, should Mary, we... Lynn, Mary Lynn had her hand up, Scott. Also. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Mary Lynn. So I just wonder if we just get um, six different cards right now together and pass them along in some way. And I think we can figure that out in a systematic fashion to send to each school to just write a, a note to the teachers to thank them for their support. And then we can figure out a monetary gift maybe of what Lindy's saying at the end of the year, but it's teacher appreciation week and a card to each school would go a long way if, if that's where we're at a, dis, at a discussion right now. Yeah. And I was also wondering, I know, I don't know how feasible this is because I know everybody lives everywhere, but I, you know, the parades that have been happening around to say thank you to, um, to you know, to visit again with kids, I do wonder if there's any possibility that we could potentially go on several caravans, even around to all of our staff, and um, saying thank you in a different way. That so many teachers are they themselves doing that? That it'd be nice for them to be on the receiving end of it as well. Yeah, that's really thoughtful. I want to remind you that we have um, you know strict 
protocols we follow with our staff and food delivery. Um, and I, unless you're speaking of like having a, being part of a caravan and driving behind the bus. Yeah, or, yeah no, we would be driving separately with signs in your car. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I, I agree, Joe, with your chat. <laughs> Thank you, Casey. Um, on the Romney Parade tomorrow. Um, oh. And Friday. What time? Uh, Casey, do you have? Are you sorry? Still I wasn't feeling very camera ready at this hour. <laughs> sorry. That's okay. okay. You don't have we're, to be. We're following the Middlesex one uh, bus tomorrow from between ten and about twelve fifteen. So I, I'm not entirely sure what time would be at your stop, but we're following I'll this. Leave at uh, at ten a.m. The district just, website. So tomorrow buses. is Middlesex one, and a week from Friday is Middlesex two. Yeah. So buses leave at 10 a.m. at U32, if for anyone who's interested in following. And then yes. the next Callus Parade will be next Thursday, um, 514 at 10 from at 10 to 12. 10 to 12. Thank you, Kat. And Deborah, and that was something Deborah that you'd be Carla willing to collect that, maybe collect sure. that for us and send it around. So we yeah, I'm just afraid of losing track of it in the chat. Yep. And yeah. if you would That's like a great idea. Do, if you would like um, my office can have a card sent to every school on your behalf. I know that you wouldn't be able to sign it personally. That was a suggestion Mary Lynn had made. Um, we could do that for you within the next day or so if you wanted to just post those at the school. So let me know. Okay. Um, uh, are, are we good with this? Yeah. That's um, I, I like Flora's suggestion um, in the chat box if you haven't seen it. Thank you, Flora. Um, well, that's a okay. great idea. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. So um, uh, at this point, um, as announced before, uh, executive session. Um, are you up for it? We would need a motion to enter executive session. Can I just clarify something real quick? Sure. Um, Chris did make a motion. Do you want to just rescind it, Chris, or does it just kind of die because? Well, that's a good point, Lisa. Thank you for keeping track. I'll let it wither on the vine. <laughs> I'll write that. It withered on the vine. It, 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 it'll curl at the edges when it's it, in the frost <laughs> at okay. night. Thanks. Great. OK, so. Um, Executive session, we would need a motion to enter executive session. Uh, what's the purpose I'm of the we... contractual matter? It, sorry. Move carry. I'll, I'll move that we enter executive session for a contractual matter. Thank you, Kai. Um, second. Second. Chris seconds. All in favor of entering executive session, please click yes on your on your participant box. No, if you oppose. Keith, can, are you still with us? Can you set us up a, a break room, a breakout room for this? I'm working on it right now, yes. Oh, perfect, thank you. Lisa, if you can share it with me, I'll, I'll finish this off. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you, good night. Good night, good night Lisa. Good night. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you always. Good. Okay. So uh, we are now in executive session, I guess, when Keith has when us we, there. Not quite yet. Not quite. Not quite yet. We, we have to go into a breakout room, um, mm -hmm. which he's setting up for you right now. Okay. Deborah, I'm assuming you're also going to be in this executive session? Yes, Deborah, Deborah is invited to be in. Okay. So it's just the board and Deborah, is that correct? Um, I think just the board and Deborah. Okay. Let me just make sure I have everybody. So we only have, have, or, sorry, go ahead. Do we only have 12 board members here right now? 
Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, let me see. Hold on. Yes, we have 14 members on the board, and George and Jonathan are not here. Okay. I think you should be all set now. There is no action to be taken following that executive session. Um, Diane, you had a question, I believe. Yes, yeah, so I guess it's a, a question and a clarification that, again, if there is a team, regardless of whether it's three or five or whoever, if there is a team that is creating the agenda, then that is the agenda that should stay until it comes to the board meeting and that opportunity to be there, um, you know, that addition to the or a changes to the um, agenda. So I guess it does. I, I can see where the wonderings are and where the questions are coming that we suddenly then had the email um, posing another item that went on the agenda because, because it came from you, my assumption, which is my issue, was that it had gone through that same process. And so I would just say that the clarity of this, especially as we move to new leadership, is we absolutely need to follow that procedure that whoever the agenda deciding group is, once that decision's made, it's locked, it's there, and when we come to the board meeting, that's when additions or revisions should occur. Yes, well, normally, um, normally, once the agenda is set, it stays set. Um, Marilyn pointed out, I think quite rightly, that there are occasions where um, uh, there are very serious issues that are also very urgent issues that have to be dealt with. Um, and it's a, it, it's a bit of a judgment call. <clears throat> and sometimes uh, it doesn't, um, sometimes one disagrees with the judgment. And, and I get that and I appreciate that. However, one also has to understand if something comes under your name, it gives the impression of the process being followed. And all I'm saying is, if for whatever reason that process can't be followed, then that explanation needs to be there. Um, it's just, it's confusing as we try to manage some of this different information. If it isn't following the expected process, just that we need to be aware of that. Right, I, I appreciate that. Thank you, Diane. All right. Um, Anyway, we're at future agenda Lindy items. Oh, I'm sorry, Lindy. I just I wanted to clarify when Krista or Deborah had added in more appointments, those are very timely and they just add to the packet, but they're not a new agenda item. So I wouldn't want um, Deborah to think that those can't be added because we want those people signed on before they get taken by somebody else. Mm -hmm. So something where it's already on the agenda and you're adding more information related to it is understandable. Okay, good. I'm glad that's clear. Um, Jonas, did you have something? No? Okay. So uh, future agenda items. We have, we have um, a lot of interest for the future, but um, if there's nothing to consider, then we can move on to um, adjourn by consensus at 1022. Yeah? Thank you very much, everyone. Good. Much appreciated, as always. Take good care. Thank you. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye, everyone.